Okay, of officially starting now. So I gotta, I gotta reorient myself a little bit again. I was gonna try to complete this ritual that required me to have like some kind of orb or something, which I don't know if I have. I have like a cannonball, which is kind of similar. Oh yeah, the twenty four twenty four meat so juicy. Um, it's still playing that same music from the menu. This does not seem like the music that would be playing in a crypt. Just you know, so we're all on the same page. Um, I have. I'm a snake oiler. I'm playing on hard mode. I have the hard hat. I have no partner with me. I'm like ultimate extreme hardcore player. Um, I have a build that I'm focusing on stacking poison right now. So like, I have fan that fan hammer, which does like a triple shot burst, which I really like. And then dead eye just stacking that pistol attack damage, which goes really well with fan hammer. Um, some speed, some lock spickling, lock <laughs> lock spickling. Stuff like that. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm a bad guy. I'm kind of not very nice to people. But the real, like, holy grail of the build comes from my toilet pistol, which I don't have equipped right now because I was fighting undead enemies, which I think are immune to poison, but I don't actually know, but it, I just think. But the toilet pistol applies five poison to the enemy when you shoot them, and... I'm going to equip this right now. So the toilet pistol does five poison. I have the passive, where is it, expert poisoner. It triples all the poison that I would do. So basically, each shot with the toilet pistol does 15 poison. And poison is just a numerical straight, like, it takes that much damage every turn if it's poison. So it'll take 15 damage a turn. But fan hammer shoots three times. So it'll actually apply 45 poison with the toilet pistol and expert poisoner. So um, so basically I just have this super poison stacking damage monstrosity thing that I'm going for. Um, I also don't have, I'm trying to get as, men, as much AP as I can get. Um, I need to level this up one more time because I have a self buff and I wanna be able to buff myself and, um, and fan the hammer in the same turn because the buff does not take up like a turn or whatever. Okay. I actually kind of don't... I'm worried that if I perform the ritual and I don't have all the pieces, then it's going to, like, permanently fuck it up for me. But, uh... I'll try it anyway. Mm. Also, uh... I'm going to get back into my cowboy voice. All right. You're right. Some kind of ritual circle drawn on the ground in red chalk. Perform the ritual. Hmm, let's see. According to that gross scroll, you need human ashes, some stardust, and a glass sphere if you want to do this ritual. You dig through all your stuff, but you don't find any glass spheres. Nuts. Nuts are not glass spheres. Oh, well. Well, at least that confirms my suspicion that I need the glass sphere in order to continue. Also, like, uh, when I start out, I'm like half and half doing the voice, and then by the end of the stream, I'm going to be doing the voice the whole time because I'm a lunatic, so we'll see. Anyway, right now I've just been sort of like clearing out all these locations before the inevitable plot point thing, which is I go to the railroad camp and I blow up the rocks with a bunch of dynamite so I can access presumably the next area of the map. But right now I'm just, I'm just sort of wandering around. Let's go to the Big Apple. All right. You find an abandoned crate which has mine stuff stands along the side. Which is the worst grammar you've ever seen, even in a time and place notable for its poor grammar. I'm gonna open it with my crowbar. You pry the lid off the crate and help yourself to the contents, which are now your stuff. Can of kerosene. Surprising how many obstacles can be overcome simply by covering them with gas and setting them on fire. Used in combat. Weakens foes and makes them flammable. Pretty good. Smelling salts. Uh, wakes up stuff. Oh no, it gives you an action point. Alright, back on the trail. As you reach the center of the clearing, you are simultaneously struck with a profound awe and a terrible stench as you discover the largest road apple you've ever seen. You can't even imagine how this got here. Was it a giant horse? Was it 200 normal-sized horses acting collaboratively? They should have sent a poet. Yeah, they should have. Is this an apple? Wait a second. Oh, I'm all shovel this up. Make a little dent in it. Oh, something happened and I didn't read what it... Oh, it's quite a bit smaller. I'm gonna get it. 
Am I getting one XP every time I do this, or just once for each tier of size that it is? I'm gonna keep going. Well, apparently the game is just flabbergasted that I mashed the E button repeatedly. Okay. Let me see. I don't know how much experience I had before, but now I got 74, so... I don't know. Wait. Was that entire map location just a... Just a big piece of poop? Apparently it was. Alright. Moving on to the silver platter. Oh, the silver platter. So I found like a steel or a silver melting place where I can like make silver bullets and then churn, transform the silver bullets into some other stuff or whatever. I discovered a circus. I'll keep going where I'm going. The silver platter. That that's a happy looking guy. A little a lot happier than what I'm used to seeing. In fact, I'm kind of unnerved by that by that man. Yeah, the the trees are pretty cool, Fleeting World. They are. Howdy, what can I do for you? Well, you have a menu. A menu? What are you talking about? Isn't this a walk-up style restaurant? What? No, I'm a silver plater. I plate things with silver, you know. Oh, I thought your sign was... Never mind. The man grins, revealing a full set of silver-plated teeth. So, you need something plated? What are my options? He looks you up and down. I could plate that hat you're wearing. People with silver hats got mo get more done, they say. This will enchant your hat to add one to your maximum action points. That is very good, because I want action points. It currently has three moxie on it, though. And I don't know if that's going to go away if I do that. Oh, maybe something else. I could plate your melee weapon, what you're using there. It'll do more damage that way. Increase the damage of your equipped melee weapon by three, or even more against creatures that are vulnerable to silver. I don't give a shit about melee. Maybe something else. I could plate your pistol, it'll do more damage. Uh, so increase the damage of your equipped pistol by three, or even more against yada yada. Now, I use my pistol a lot, and increasing my pistol's damage by three is effectively nine because of fan hammer. But, it's still not quite like... I don't know if this is like a reusable thing or, or what the deal is, so I'm, I'm really hesitant to just sort of spam this. Uh, maybe something else? He looks through your pack and mouth. Hmm, a turnip? That sounds like an interesting challenge. Say, that's a fine looking tongue you've got there. I could plate that for you, sure. My actual tongue? The one in my head? Yep. So, I could plate my own tongue for 2,000 meat, or I could plate a turnip that I have, which I actually think I dug up like at the beginning of the game, so I'm, I'm liking this callback, for 20,000 meat. Well, I made it this far. I feel like I should plate my tongue. I don't know what's going to happen, but I eventually want to come back and plate the turnip. I, I, I get the feeling that I can just plate anything with this guy. Like, he'll just continue to be able to plate stuff. I plate my tongue. Well, anything for a weird life. Go ahead and silver plate my tongue, why not? You lose 200 meat. Open as wide as you possibly can. The process is extremely painful. You get a perk silver tongue. Your tongue is actually silver. Well, silver plated, but you'll be able to convince people it's really silver. Plus three moxie. Nice, that's my preferred stat. Immediately afterward, you ask him for a complete refund. And he gives it to you. Um, because of the... Whoa. It works! That's pretty cool. Silver tongue. That's nice. Well, I guess I'll try to plate my hard hat with silver. What are my options again? I wanna, I'll do the hat. Hand him your hat. After a time, he hands it back. Take my leave. Now, let's see. Moment of truth, because... Okay. The silver plating stacks with the previous buff that I got which is the plus three moxie so so I can stack so it's just that's great that's amazing because I'm gonna have my hard hat on for the whole game okay I need the woods a little too thick you know I, I'm tempted to, to plate my pistol you know thinking that maybe it's not just a one-time thing 
but maybe I can come back when I get a new gun and plate it. That would like pretty much double my damage, my physical damage with my toilet pistol. You know what? I'm just gonna plate my toilet pistol too. I don't care. What are my options? I'm gonna maybe something. Well, now I can't plate my hat again. Maybe it's because it's already plated. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe something else. I'm gonna plate my pistol. I lose 500 meat. Take my leave. Now let's see what this. Toilet pistol, silver plated. All right. Now here's the question. I'm gonna equip this other pistol. Or I'm gonna equip this other pistol in the correct area. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if. I can now plate this one as well. What are my options? Maybe something else. Plate my pistol. Okay, actually, never mind. So it looks like I can continue to do this, which is great. So, giving back my toilet pistol. Six to seven. Um, my toilet pistol's practically as good as General Gobb's pistol now. All right. Where are we gonna go? There's Fort All Dead, Humming Cave, Circus. Well, Undead. I'm guessing there's undead at Fort All Dead, and they don't like to be poisoned, so I can go to the cave. Crate in the road. Open it with my crowbar. Bar of soap and some nails. Oh, nails can do something somewhere or something. Time was these would have been brads, but nowadays man does not live by bread alone. I'm a helper. All right, here we are at the Humming Cave. Well, these rocks are weirdly organized. Can I interact with them in any way? That bush looks different. This might be what, what the nun was talking about. I'm pick it. I got that purple grass. Oh yeah, there's a quest I'm on for a nun. She wanted me to come here. I better go in. Alright, what do we got? Okay, we got some eyes right there and we got a big slab. Might be able to push it over. It requires 10 muscle. I got exactly 10. Oh, all right. It's a snake, though. I kind of want to fight snakes because they give me, uh, like, venom for my snake oil and stuff. All right. What's this? Looks like a portal to another dimension or something. Alright, so I'm in some otherworldly kind of place with monoliths. A weird device. I'll take it. I got a strange stone arrow. Triangular object made out of a strange stone-like material shot through with channels of smooth black glass. Well, it's not the uh, orb that can trigger the ritual that I want, but it'll do. Alright. Can I just map my way out of here? That'd be a little weird. Yeah, triangular arrow, purple grass. Can't really like. I'll just portal again. All right. Now I'll move on. I'll go to the circus. Strange stone arrow you just found starts going crazy, beeping and booping, whirling all around on its own accord. Practically drags you in the direction of a strange, decrepit-looking house. It's the professor's house. I feel inclined to follow the arrow at this point, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out the house. Oh, it's just way down here, all the way, all the way across the tracks. Beating machines leads you to a ramshackle house in the middle of the desert. Hmm. If I had forging, I could grab this coffee cactus, but I don't. All right, what do we got here? We got a Monopoly man. Professor's toilet isn't in very good repair. I'll flush it. Thank you. Appears to be an extremely powerful magnifying mirror, basically an inside-out microscope. I'm going to check myself. The microscopic mites that live in your eyelashes seem to be getting along just fine. All right, boring books. One of the shelf ain't full of holes. I like inspecting everything before I talk to the people around because, you know, like maybe something's going to... I don't know why I do it. Dresser contains 10 instances of the exact same shirt and 20 identical socks. This device doesn't seem to be, what is it, operational unless its function is to do nothing. Now this device is made of the same yeah, material as before, I know we all know. Excuse me, my name's KK Play Play. What? Oh, I didn't notice you come in. I'm not used to visitors, but folks generally call me Professor. The Professor. Is there something I can do for you? Well, I found this bleeping gizmo and I sort of followed the bleeping. And it led me here. 
Well, I'll be. It certainly led you to the right place, young man. This El Vibrato, this is El Vibrato technology, and I happen to be as much an expert as anyone alive today. El what now? El Vibrato. They were an ancient race that lived here long before humans. Well, they mostly lived underground, so they might still be living as far as I know. Never seen a peep of an actual person, though, just the machines they left behind. Were they space aliens? Could be aliens, or genius pre-humans, or an entirely different terrestrial evolutionary line. At this stage of investigation, it's impossible to say, isn't it exciting? Here, let me, let me have a closer look at your bleeping gizmo. I'll give it to him. Uh-huh. As I suspected, this is one of their transponders. It detects other El Vibrato technology and homes you in, see? That'll be why it led you here. I've got a thing I've been trying to repair. He tinkers around with the transponder for a bit and then plugs a strange stone marble into a socket on it. There you go. Good as new. Just swipe up or down to turn it on or off. Got the El Vibrato transponder. Calls out to other El Vibrato machinery. Spooky action at a distance. You don't trust it. Swipe? Now I gotta warn you, the device will lead you to abandoned El Vibrato technology, but it might also attract unwanted attention. From what? From the El Vibrato, te Vibrato technology. You'll see what I mean, just be careful. Okay. You know, I now I think about it, you've arrived at a perfect time. In order to get anywhere further with my research, I need more samples of El Vibrato tech. But searching for it eats up all the time I could be using to research it. Aha, uh -huh, I get you. Right, you're the adventuresome type, so bring me back whatever devices you find, and if I can get them up and running, that'll benefit both of us. All right, deal. Uh, what do we need? Oh, wait, no, skipped you. Oh, great! First priority will be to get my keystone fabricator running. They're lock they've locked their doors and things with these little stone alloy blocks, see? So if we can make our own, that'll open a lot of doors for us, literally and figuratively. All right, what do we need? The components aren't rare, at least... As far as priceless ancient technology goes, bring me all about five handfuls of scrap. I should be able to salvage the last parts I need from that much. Hey there, the corn. Welcome to stream. Thanks for stopping in. Roger that. Okay. So I need to find some tech. Like El Vibrato tech. I'm going to examine this, make sure it's turned on. The professor told you how to turn this thing off. Do you want to shut it down? No, I want to keep it on. So I need five of these. This reminds me of part of Breath of the Wild, where, you know, like the ancient tech labs and stuff without giving too much away. What is this a map of? Annotated circles and lines. That looks like, this is like where I am. This is like the town. Okay, this is the map. Okay. So, got to the professor's house. I was on my, on my way to the circus when I got sidetracked there. You smell it before you see it. Skeleton trudging towards you, covered with mud and muck and smelling like garbage juice. Must have crawled out of some horrible bog nearby, and if the skeleton smells this bad, the bog must be unimaginable. So it makes sense that even a skeleton would want to get away from there. That bog sounds like a place I want to go, because I bet it's got poison stuff in it. I'm going to fight this skeleton. Alright. It's a smelleton. 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 Alright. Well, I'm just going to... Oh wow, this smelleton's got a lot of HP. It's got pretty beefy stats, too. I wish that there was, like, a switch, um, switch weapon button. Let's see. I finally have, how much, where's my, I have five action points, so I can buff myself first with strong medicine. All right. I'm gonna buff. More. All right. Now I'm going to do Fan the Hammer. Hopefully he doesn't just one-shot me here. Yeah, skeletons are immune to poison. He deals stench damage. 22 HP. Oh my god, I got a 50% chance to win, in a fifth, in, or I could just die. That's pretty brutal. I guess I have to rely on R and Jesus here for this one. Oh, thank god. I did it. It's close, man, but my toilet toilet strategy is not going to be very good in this stench bog or whatever. 20 HP, some skeleton stuff. Skull chips, that's new. Itty bitty bits of skull once they were good for keeping somebody's brain salsa inside, but not anymore. Alright, nice job. Hey, the corn, if you're around, can you, like, tell me... Can you tell me if my, like, voice and audio levels are sounding better or sounding fine or 
What's up with them if something could stand to go up or down or in a certain direction? Really, anybody that's watching. A little weird. You didn't expect to find a circus all the way out here. There's basically nobody around for miles. There's a rodeo clown man in the ticket booth. Well, there hasn't actually been a rodeo since the cows came home, so I guess he's just a clown. Ugh, clowns. Creepy. All right. What is this? A northern clown wart. Forge and three. It must be good. All right, tickets. As he approached, the clown puts on that basically cheerful face, facial expression that retail employees use when the last thing they want to deal with is a customer. But they're not allowed to say so. Hey, it sounds pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, hey, thanks both of you for letting me know. I mean, your opinion's as good as anybody else's. You're my viewers. All right, I'm talking to this guy. Welcome to Barnum. Oh, what kind of voice does a clown have? Uh, I've been doing pretty annoying voices. Maybe I'll just do a regular voice for the clown. Welcome to Barnaby Bob's Perfectly Normal Traveling Circus Sideshow, sir. How can I help you? Well, I'd like to see the circus, please. Well, you came to the right place then. <laughs> but if you want to get inside, you need a ticket. And presumably you can sell me one. Why, certainly I can. That's my job, after all. For you, sir, a ticket will cost 5,000 meat. Say what? Does it seem a bit high? I promise you, sir. At this price, it's a real steal. Well, you've got that right. Oh, uh, well, why is it so expensive? Well, now, this is no podunk little traveling circus. We've got rides, games, food, and an amazing demonstration of knife-throwing skill by none other than Barnaby Bob himself. Well, tell me about the rides. Well, I suppose I should say ride, but we haven't had a single grizzly merry-go-round accident since, uh, well, since we stopped turning it on. Tell me about the games. Oh, uh, well, we've got tons of them. Does three count as tons? Three's more like some. We've got some of them. I'm getting like slightly creepier and creepier as I go on with this clown. Uh, tell me about the food. We've got your we've got your favorites. Popped corn, sarsaparilla with the fancy new bottle caps, and get this. Did you hear about that new thing a fella invented cotton candy? Yeah, I think I might have. Well, it's still patented, but we're pretty sure we figured out how it works. Mostly. More or less. Well, let's turn me by Barnaby Bob. Oh, the boss is a real master of knives, let me tell you. He does this amazing stunt where he gets a volunteer from the audience up on stage and throws knives at them. He never misses his target. Do you leave that part where he puts an apple on their head or something? What? Oh, right, sure. You are doing me a very good job of selling me on this. Why, whatever do you mean? Now, I got my hornswoggle and I'm going to use it. I'm going to hornswoggle. Look, I'll drop the act... You don't, you don't know who I am, do you? Should I? KK Play Play, Bureau of Travel and Entertainment Inspections. Bureau of... That's not a thing. Is that a thing? It's a thing. A very serious thing. And your ticket prices won't be an encouraging note in my report. Whoa now, hold on, Chief. I was just joshing you. Come on now, you know how clowns do. Mm-hmm. So what's the actual fee? 500 meat. All right. That'll do. Let me just stamp your hand for re-entry. There you go, enjoy the show. Oh. Weird. The game thinks I got a partner, but I don't. What about my partner? Partner's getting free. Thanks. Pretty pretty uh, big oversight there. Didn't think about maybe people with no partners like me. But we exist and we are valid. Alright, I'm going in. As he enter the circus, the ticket booth clown shouts, Welcome to Barnaby Bob's perfectly normal traveling circus side. So sure show sir in a loud and enthusiastic voice tongue twister there let's go inside you stroll into the circus actually i guess it's more of a carnival but let's not split hairs and find it almost entirely deserted there aren't more than a dozen other patrons besides yourself there are a bunch of clowns around working at the booths and so on more clowns than customers which is a little unsettling but at least the lines won't be very long you got it okay well here's a note the merry-go-round has a dirty canvas tarp over it the sign says condemned until further notice. We encourage anyone suffering from horse bites to consult a doctor. Interesting. What's the main stage? What does this guy have to say? Extremely muscular clown seems to be guarding the entrance to some sort of stage. Talk to him. The clown crosses his arms and grunts when you approach. The stage show ain't till later. When? Later. Yeah, but when exactly? Later. Okay, jeez. Anyway. Get buffed out by that buff clown. So I can test my mind, test my aim, test my might. I'm guessing these are like the three main stats. 
Oh yeah, yeah, maybe an maybe an invisible partner. Yeah. There's a kid here searching around with a sad look on his face. Talk to him. You okay, kid? Did you lose your parents? I lost my lucky bottle cap. You haven't seen it, have you, sir? No, but I'll keep an eye out. What's it look like? It's shiny steel and it's on a little chain. Okay, I'll let you know if I find it. Well, I'm definitely going to test my aim because that's like my forte. It appears to be a shooting gallery type carnival game. Yeah, let's have a look. Well now, fella, I like to think I know a customer with a sharp eye and a quick hand when I see one. How'd you like to test your skills against a game of dexterity? What's the game? Well, on the wall behind me, I've got a bunch of thick-skinned, under-inflated balloons. For ten meat, I'll loan you a cheap, inaccurate pistol and a pile of badly made ammunition, and your goal is to pop as many of those balloons as you can before the pistol stops working. That's an unusually honest sound of description. I've discovered making the challenge sound exactly as difficult as it is only makes people more determined to be the one who beats it. <laughs> I don't care about the prize. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to give it a shot. Oh, nice. Oh, man. 30 moxie. The clown hands you the cheap pistol and gestures at the balloons behind him. Good luck. I can shoot backwards and cross-eyed. I can shoot from the hip for 10 moxie, or I can shoot like the wind with 20 moxie. If I had 30 moxie, I could shoot like a jaguar, but I don't. So I'm just going to shoot like the wind and hope that that's good enough. You take careful aim and pop off rounds and balloons for as long as you can hold the gun together. Hey, not bad. Not bad at all. Not enough balloons for our grand prize, but it's worth a little something. He gives you a little toy stuffed cat. Oh, small plush kitten. This little tall kitten isn't very well made, but at least it's nearly cute. Ah, it goes in your offhand. Oh, it's a pistol puff damage! Woo! Pretty good. So, I'm definitely going to equip my little kitten. Well, what I got right... Oh, but what I got right now gives me two to all stats. So, like, is two moxie better than the damage that I get from the little kitten? It's so cute. But also, like, oh man, I'm just going to use the kitten for a little while and see what happens. See if it's, like, better or worse. Oh, except if I'm going to try the other tasks, then I'd rather have... What's the right? Where's the section? Oh, this is the one. No. Where's the one that has the little things you hold in your off hands? Where's my brooch? Where's my bro? Where's my? Where's my? Where's my broke? Am I not allowed to take it off? Maybe it's somewhere else. Oh no! What have I done? Have I just deleted my brooch? That'd be weird if I did, but can't seem to find it anywhere. Maybe it's in the other stuff section. Oh, I still have it. It's an offhand. I'm I'm so dumb. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I definitely am not going to win the, the mysticality one. I was thinking that the offhand item was the same thing as... Yeah, everybody's going to catch up now. And yeah, thanks, Corn. Oh my god, I thought that I wore... For some reason, I thought that the kitten went around my neck. Uh, but it doesn't. You know, I just hold it. So instead I had these flowers. Oh, it's just way better than what I have. Oh my god, okay, well, sorry. Okay. I'm gonna, okay, let's see. I wonder if I can get a different prize if I shoot from the hip now. You awkwardly fumble the ammo into the pistol and fire until it's empty, at which point you can't figure out how to get it back to open to put more in. Wow, not a single balloon popped. I did tell you the rules, right? How popping the balloons is the actual goal of the game? Okay, so it looks like 20 is like 20 or 30 or nothing, right? Test your mind. Take a closer look. Greetings and salutations, fella. This game is designed to test your intelligence and capacity for abstract thought. And, uh, well, if you care to try your luck, far be it from me to obstruct you. <clears throat> What's the game? The simplest guessing game imaginable. I've got a standard deck of playing cards here. I show you all the faces, then I turn them back over and start picking cards. You guess what cards I pick and you win. You don't shuffle? No, sir. If you can memorize a deck of cards that fast, more power to you. Or if you've got a touch of magic and you want to try reading my mind, that's fine too. Just don't dig too deep. <laughs> oh. 
What's the prize? Ticket to Barnaby Bob's stage show, which is otherwise sold out, so it's a rare catch. I'll give it a shot. I know I'm wasting meat, even though I'm only going to be able to do the mysticality one. You carefully scan the deck of cards as the clown spreads, clown spreads it out in front of you, and then he turns them over with a sleep and flourish. Ready? I'm going to give it a lot. Oh, I wish I could give it my all with 30 mysticality, but I'm just going to give it a lot. Clan starts picking cards out of the deck and holding them up with their backs to you. You manage to guess a few, but not very many. Don't feel bad, friend. That's about average. Not good enough to win a prize, though. Darn. <clears throat> well, in that case, I'm not even going to attempt to do the strength one, because I know I'm just going to fail. Man, what if one of the rewards for one of these is like something that... What's, it's the shiny orb, the glass orb. Man, I really want that glass orb. Clown here selling rubber toy balloons. When he sees he has your attention, he smiles and waggles the balloons at you enticingly. How do that fella interest you in a toy balloon? Eh, how much are they? For you, just 30 meat. Yeah. How do you make them float like that? Well, there's nothing to it. Heck, they all float around here, ho ho. Of course. Uh, what colors do you have? Ho oh, ho, well, just take a look. Um, red. They're all red. I'll take one. Alrighty then, here you go. Got a balloon. It's red. Anything else I can do for you? I'll ask you for a little more. Really, it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hair. So, ho, oh, what would you like to know? This place you've set up is kind of out of the way. What are your plans? Haven't decided yet. That's why we set down somewhere a bit more rural. Keeps things relatively quiet when we scout around, get the lay of the land and all. Ho, oh, ho. Where'd you travel from? What was your... Was your previous stop interesting? Oh, northwest-ish. It was a little hole-in-the-ground kind of place. You wouldn't have heard of it, ho-ho. Oh. Why's everyone working here a clown? Oh, it's traditional. When we... When the what-do-you-call-em... Rodeos stopped being put on, the rodeo clowns took other jobs at the circuses and carnivals. Over the years, it just became the normal thing for carnies to be clowns. It's a community, you might say, ho-ho. Oh. Who's this Barnaby Bob? Might I push the wrong button? Never mind. See you around, clown. Seems like I'm just gonna be gathering some non-essential information if I keep talking to that guy. All right. Progressing forward, ready to like kill something in one hit with my super stacked damage now. All right. Tickets. Clown is presumably selling tickets to the side show. Talk to him. Howdy, fella. Can I interest you in the wondrous and mysterious delights of the side show? Hmm. What all you got in there? Secrets, mysteries, things too weird and disturbing to be witnessed by the light of day. Freaks? Not just freaks. Gosh. How much does it cost? For you, 300 meat. And for everyone else, 300 meat. Man. I guess at this point, what am I going to spend my meat on? Yo, hey, one, Nintendo, what's up? What's up, little guy? Yeah, and, and shout out to all my chatters. Oh, wow. Oh, the viewers are just stacking up right now. I'm famous now. I got six viewers. Thanks so much for being here, everybody. Uh, I'm about to go into this sideshow that costs 300 meat, so let's go. I'm in. You won't be disappointed. In the event that you are disappointed, you are disappointed. No refunds. There you go. Enjoy. Thanks. All right. Um, I'll have to get that hot dog later. Sideshow side show tent is fairly large and packed with weird things to look at, like all good sideshows are. A few lanterns are hanging from the ceiling, casting flickering shadows around and making everything look even more eerie. A clown is hanging out in here, presumably to keep an eye on the exhibits. He grins and nods as you enter. Come on in. Take your time. Have a good look around. Just remember, no touching. Look around. That's not a problem for me. I hate touching stuff. Okay, what do we got? Go all the way this way first. Looks to be one of those weird bent mirrors that make you look all crazy. As if there wasn't enough crazy looking stuff around here already. I'll look at myself. Yeah! This mirror somehow shows you what you look like in clown makeup. Bloodshot eyes stare back at you from a pasty white face painted with an odd pattern of red triangles. In the flickering lantern light, it almost looks like he winks at you. Burr! Looks to be... Well, I'll try it in this one. The mirror makes you look like really stretched out and thin. Your limbs twist and ride like snakes as you move around. It's a bit unsettling and your muscles ache a little sympathetically. Your reflection in the mirror is short and squashed looking, folded up like an accordion. 
You spend a moment moving back and forth in front of the mirror, seeing how the image changes. It's kind of amusing. All right, what do we got here? Based on his attitude, uniquely combining attentiveness and extreme boredom, you assume this clown's job is to keep an eye on the sideshow exhibits. Howdy, fella. Welcome to the sideshow. Thanks. What's to see in here? Well, down to the left, we have a collection of spooky warped mirrors. Right here, we have exhibits of clown eggs and pickled punks. And the further down to the right is a freak show. Feel free to explore, and I'll be here if you got any questions. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, I'm, I guess I'll ask all these questions. Why not? What's with the weird mirrors? Ain't they a riot? That's what they call an optical illusion, as I understand it. It has to do with the way the light reflects off of them. I am 100% sure that what I saw can't be explained by the reflection of light. <laughs> no telling what you might see if you look too long. Uh-huh. Alright, these clown eggs. These shelves are displaying a large collection of strangely painted eggs. Have a closer look. You see several shelves full of white eggs, each one painted with a unique pattern of colorful shapes. A small placard pinned to one of the shelves says, Clown Eggs. In the circus community, it's traditional for each clown to paint their chosen makeup pattern onto an egg shell. These clown eggs are archived for future reference to ensure that no one chooses a pattern that has already been used. It is considered extremely taboo to wear another clown's face. These must be the eggs for the clowns that work in this circus. You recognize a few of them, like the clown here in the sideshow tent and the ticket seller clown out front. I'll look at them more closely. Uh, hey, step back, please. No touching. Sorry. I wasn't going to look with my hands. I was just going to look closely. What are these? J shells are filled with jars, and the jars are filled with things. Real weird-looking things. Look closer. You lean in a little closer to inspect the jars. They mostly contain malformed and or mutated animals pickled in formaldehyde. A three-headed kitten, some kind of ferret or weasel with eight legs, a twisted Möbius loop of snake without a head or tail. Weird, crazy stuff. One shelf seems devoted to huge, gross, pale grubs, like fat, featureless white worms the size of a sweet potato. The one on the end is larger than the others and has shiny black eyes. Someone has painted its face in an apparent parody of clown makeup. Yuck. Well, I kind of like them. Take a closer look, let me guess. The pasty white face has been painted with little blue triangles over and under the eyes. The creature has a long, thin slash of a mouth as well. And the area around it has been painted with a bright red lipstick. The black eyes flash red as the thing suddenly thrashes in its jar, spinning to face you and stretching its mouth open, revealing rows of yellow shark teeth. You stumble back with a cry of shock. Gow! Ha <laughs> Gotcha pretty good there, buddy! What in the... What is that? <laughs> It ain't a real critter. It's made of rubber and clay and doll parts and such. Got an electromagnet under the shelf to move it with. It takes a little push button gizmo out of his pocket to show it to you. Should have seen your face. You about jumped right out of your boots. <laughs> oh. Man, I like the, just the triangle, little triangle in a jar. And just a smiley face in a jar. All right, what do we got here? This guy's a startling sight, even for a circus freak show. His entire head's one enormous eyeball. As you look him over, he stares back at you. Not that he's got much choice. Talk to him. Er, hello there. I'm KK. How's it going? Can you talk? Guess not. So, uh, circus gig. How do you like it? His hands slowly curl into fists and the knuckles turn white with tension. I see, er. I understand, I mean. Do you blink? Or wink, I guess. I guess not. You move a little to the side and lean over the rope to get a closer look at the guy. He's basically just what he seems to be at first glance, a guy with a giant eyeball for a head. You do notice two things, though. First, he has an odd lump at the, well, what you would call the base of his skull, if he had one. A sort of crumpled flesh and mass the size of a fist with a squint and some imagination. It almost looks like the crushed and shriveled vestigial remains of a human head. The second thing he notices is that his ankles are locked to the legs of the stool, and the legs of the stool are bolted to the floor. Okay, we'll see you around. I mean, it doesn't look like there's any stool there. Seems more like this guy, but, um, you know, I kind of want to free that guy. The man is neatly dressed, though his suit is a bit threadbare and out of fashion. He's smoking a pipe and leafing through a magazine. When you stop to look at him, he nods amicably. Talk to him. Hello there, welcome to the sideshow. My name's Douglas. Hi, I'm KK. Delighted to meet you. So, what's your deal? Why I'm in a sideshow, you mean? Well, yeah, you seem perfectly normal. 
How forthright of you. Of course, it is only natural to wonder. Wait a minute. You said that last bit without moving your lips. Are you a ventriloquist? Not at all. Allow me to de demonstrate. He stands up and turns around. His back is the same as his front. That is, his suit has been tailored with two front sides, and he has another face on the back of his head with his hair cut and parted appropriately. Ta-da. As he sits back down, his knees and other joints crack and pop loudly as they reverse themselves. Douglas winces slightly, though certainly not as much as you'd expect. What in the... Surprising, yes? A bit, yeah. How is that even possible? Douglas shrugs and holds his pipe up to the now back of his head so his other face can take a puff. Are you... What's the phrase? Siamese twins? A bit of a dated phrase. Not exactly. It's difficult to describe, I'm afraid. Two minds in one body with two faces. It'd be closer to the truth to say two instances of the same mind. With, as you say, two faces. You're right. It doesn't make any sense at all. The other face chuckles and Douglas holds his magazine behind his back. Took some getting used to, that much is quite certain. Were you born this way? I would rather not discuss how I came to be this way, if you don't mind. Okay. Sorry. No apology necessary. Man, you're... Why are you in a sideshow? What, with a regular suit and a haircut, you could easily pass for normal. I have a contract. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot the clown making a gesture, but you didn't catch what it was. Douglas clears his throat. Plus, well, it's quite the life, you know. Free room and board, travel the world, and you meet such interesting people. Your knees must be a wreck. Surgery was necessary to permit them to bend in both directions. It sounds worse than it feels, I assure you. I'll talk to you later, Douglas. Uh, who's this? There's a lady here with her head sticking out of a hole in a large metal box. She nods politely at her. At you. Talk to her. Or, er, hello. Hello there. Enjoying the carnival? Well, it's interesting. She smiles slightly. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Can I ask you a question? Certainly. What's your name? I'm Janet. And you? I'm KK. Er, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, KK. Hey, why are you in a box? It's a rather personal question, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm only teasing, dear. Would you like to see inside? Um, sure. Janet whistles to signal the clown and he moseys over. He unlocks the door out in front of the box and throws it open with a theatrical flourish. Inside, instead of Janet's body, you see a tangled, complicated assortment of glass tubes and pipes, ticking clockwork gears and pumps. Liquids of various colors, mostly red, slosh through the tubes. A large bellows near the top inflates, then begins to slowly inflate. What do you think? It's amazing. Never seen anything like it. Well, I take that as a compliment. Certainly educational, I imagine. The larger tank on the left is my stomach. If you'd like to see what I had for lunch today. You watch the various liquids slosh around in their tanks and pipes for a minute. Weird. Gross. But it is indeed educational. You got a perk. Anatomical learning. You know what makes a human being tick and how to stop one from ticking come to that. Plus three melee attack damage. Well, that'll be useful if I ever get in a melee tangle, but I'm more of a ranged guy. How did this happen? Were you in some kind of terrible accident? I'm sorry, but I, I can't talk about that. Well, of course, sorry. Must be a painful memory. Her calmly composed face creases into a very slight grimace as she shoots a sidelong glance at the clown. Yes. Well, it was nice to meet you, Janet. So long. Good luck, KK. Leave. Oh, Janet's like a mon like a robot. Seems like this these clowns here are the real bad guys, and that they're. I hope I get a, like shoot a bunch of clowns. Okay, what do we got going on? I went in there. Got food. Red hots. Calls the clown behind his food stand. Red hots, footlongs, two kinds of mustard. There's also a small sign that says "Lost and Found." Talk to the vendor. The clown grins and gestures at the little charcoal grill behind him. Howdy, sir. Interested in a f hot foot-long sausage? Uh, how much are they? 250 meat with your choice of condiments. That's a, that's a really expensive hot dog. Where are the condiments? I got onions, pickle relish, three kinds of mustard, and two kinds of ketchup. Wait. Kinds of... Is that the, is that the correct, like... A way to apostrophize that because it's 
kinds of, not kinds have, you know, because anyway, what kinds of mustard? Brown, yellow, and blue. Blue? Blue mustard? Ah, uh, looks like I'm all out of the blue, sorry. Two kinds of ketchup? Yep, got both ketchup and catsup. Man, I'm gonna say no thanks. That's gonna be half my meat. If I, if I take a hot dog from that clown. Although, you know, to be fair, I really want it. Because I love hot dogs, but there's drinks and candy as well. Cold drinks, calls the clown behind the food stand. Ice cold sarsaparilla in bottles. Howdy, sir. Can't treat yourself to an ice cold soft drink? You said you're selling them in bottles? That's right. Got the newfangled crown cork bottles, caps and all. And what kinds do you have? I got root beer, ginger beer, and sarsaparilla. How about energy drinks? Nope. How about lemonade? Nope. How about strawberry? Nope. How about cream soda? Nope. How about cream soda? Again. Nope. How about vanilla? Nope. How about cherry? You got... Nope. How about, uh... Let's see. You, you make the drinks yourself? You're asking if we have a wagon dedicated to brewing and bottling three different kinds of sodas on our traveling carnival. No, we stock up as we pass through large towns. Ah. Uh, well, how much are they? 205 meat. 205? It's for the deposit on the bottle. Man, no thanks. This is going to clear me out. Yeah, the, and the corn. Me loving blue things. That's a... Uh, he's, he's referencing... A fact about me that I, I like eating things with blue food dye because, I mean, apparently, I read this in like a, a journal a while ago, but apparently there's like this regenerative fluid in in, uh, in blue food dye that's like a chemical that doesn't exist in like any other food dye, and it, it like regenerates your spinal fluid and your like brain liquid stuff, and it's like one of the only things in a human diet that does that, so like eating blue stuff is in its own weird way, really healthy. But I also haven't, like, looked it up to research further because I'm afraid that it's going to be wrong. All right. Cotton candy, calls the clown behind this food stand and then makes a fweeoot noise with a side slide whistle. Come try this just-invented confectionery delight. The clown blows a slide whistle again as you approach. Fwee! Step right up, fella. Step up and try one of the world's newest candy sensations. What is it? Cotton candy, the finest in several senses of the word. Spun sugar created through a revolutionary new process. It's so light and sweet and fluffy. It's like eating butterfly dreams and kitten wishes. Woo-wee. So it isn't actually made of cotton? What? No, cotton is indigestible, no matter how much chocolate you cover it with. Found that out the hard way, did you? Whee-hoo. How do you make it? Pats the metal box with a wide funnel coming out the top. This little machine right here. Can't tell you how it works, much as I like to brag. It's a trade secret. You invented it? Not as such. A couple dentists down south were the first ones. Dentists, go figure. Fweeoot! But after hearing about it, I managed to figure out how it works. Made a few improvements with my design, too. Now I'm really curious. Sorry, fella. The secrets in this box are for nobody's eyes but my own. Fweeoot! I'll be happy to sell you some cotton candy, though. How much does it cost? Just 300 meat. Fweeoot! Now this is the most, this is the most uh, expensive one, which makes me feel like maybe it's the best one. Also, if I'm ever going to kill all these clowns, I want to buy their, one of each of their things first so that I, like, learn their secrets or whatever. I'll buy this one. Alrighty, that'll be 300 meat, fooey. Okay. The clown puts his slide whistle down on the counter, ducks underneath, and comes back up with a paper cone, which he holds in the mouth of the metal box. He pulls down a lever, and the machine makes a thin, squealing sound as glitter and white spun sugar collects around the paper cone in a fluffy cloud. Here you go. Enjoy. Fooey. All right, was this worth... Let's see if this is worth 300 meat. All right. Even just a plain old sugar tastes better on a stick. Speed by three for the rest of the day. Sells for five meat. I feel like I just got ripped off, maybe. There's a clown here selling rubber toy balloons. Oddly, it looks exactly like the other one, though I guess it's hard to tell, really. What with the makeup and all. Talk to him. Howdy, fella. Anything else I can do for you? Wait, it's the same one from before. Weren't you on the other side of the midway just now? Oh, nope, that's the other balloon guy. 
We just dress alike and use the same face paint. Did we fool you? He grins and gives you a big exaggerated wink. I see. Anything else I can do for you? Tell me a little more about your circus. Really, it's more of a carnival, but let's not split hairs. Ho-ho, what would you like to know? Uh, what are your traveling plans? I've already... Yeah, I already asked him this part. Let's see, Barnabas Bob. Boss is a real famous showman, though. I'm not so... Surprised if you wouldn't have heard of him round here, ho ho, got eyes like a hawk, and he's a real whiz with those knives of his, don't miss the shows, ho ho, ho ho. And then the clown question, yeah, yeah, I asked him about the clowns, okay. You know, this place rubs me the wrong way, alright, like, I, I don't know, I don't like it, I want to come back and I want to patoo pew all the clowns. I'm going to go this way to the egress. Maybe this guy has anything else to tell me. In order to get into the Barnaby Bob, Barnabas Bob show, though, I need to win the, like, 30 stat things. But I have 22 moxie, so I need 8 more moxie. I got 120 experience right now, though. I could pump my moxie a little bit, trying to get closer to the, uh, the amount. I don't think I can use my buffs on myself unless I'm in combat. Oh, I also have items that I can eat to, like, temporarily buff stuff. Okay, here we go. So, I'm gonna... Man, I could... It's super cheap to just buff each of these by one, you know? Just to hit skill checks and stuff. I'm gonna do one moxie. Now it's 30 experience. I'm gonna do one more moxie. Now it's 40 experience. I have 70. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do another moxie. And then I'm gonna just gonna bump each of these by one. So now I have 25 moxie. Now let's see if I have any items that can buff me up over, put me over the limit of 30 moxie. I think it was like the hot dog that I got, the sausage dog. Moxie by six for the rest of the day. Here we go. I'm going to get that 30 thing from the test your aim with my juicy saucy hot dog. Where'd that go? All right, salsa dog, eat it. Eat the hot dog, being careful not to get any of the sauce on you. You gain an effect, salsa dogging. You're feeling zesty, and you've got the mustard stains on your lips to prove it. Got to stay clean. So now my moxie is effectively 31. All right, let's do this game. I'll give it a shot. Yo, I'm going to shoot like a jaguar this time. Not sure exactly how a jaguar shoots, but presumably it's pretty good. You clear nearly the entire wall of balloons, and the clown looks genuinely impressed. Well, I'll be. Looks like you win. Congratulations on the finest shooting I've seen in quite a time. Got a circus show ticket. Oh, so I get the ticket if I <clears throat> hit 30 on any of them. Okay. Show will be starting soon. Don't miss it. Thanks. Man, I gotta itch my nose real quick. Okay, so... Presumably, I don't need to hit the 30 for the other stats, but if I hit the 20 for the other stats, maybe I could get an item, although the item that I got was pretty specifically only good for shooting. So maybe the items that I could get for the other ones would not be good for me in this playthrough that I'm doing. All right. Either way, I'm going to bust open some 100% uh, some pure coconut water. I'm just going to drink. This is going to be my drink of choice right now. I'm a little under the weather. And boy, does this stuff hydrate. Okay, bottoms up. You know, is anybody else drinking anything right now? What are you drinking? Also, like, how do I get into this show? Oh, it's the main one. Okay. Talk to this guy. Clown crosses his arms and grunts. Oh, right. It's not until later. Well, so I just can't get in? Man. <clears throat> I wonder how I get in. I'm good. What was this kid looking for again? His lucky bottle cap. Strawberry flavored water is what the corn's drinking. Uh, so, like, is it, like, sparkling water or just strawberry water? And we got a Twix 
chomp it. That's not a drink. Twix is not a drink. I didn't find I didn't find his bottle cap. Man. His bottle cap is probably here. Man, where is it? Where's his bottle cap? Maybe I guess there's probably stuff going on in the main stage that I can't get to right now. But man, what is this guy? Oh, he just wants he just letting me in. Real weird things. All right. Oh, you lean in closer to inspect the gross thing. Despite what the clown said, it certainly looks real. Whoever made it did an excellent and disgusting job. Peeking surreptitiously under the shelf, you don't see any evidence of an electromagnet or other such device. Yeah, this place is. This place is up to no good. I tell you what. But I guess it's time for me to leave. And now, I can give that nun back her plant, right? Regular water with a strawberry Mio flavor squeezed in. Is that like, okay, so it's like a packet that goes into water. Your El Vibrato beeps and you follow the signal because of course you do. Why wouldn't you? One reason why you might not is that it leads, led you to a hunking robot that could easily pound you to a scrap. Oh, man. I guess I fight it, but I have my toilet. I, I bet you can't poison robots. Oh, we got the jump on him. At least we got that. Oh, but can I just kill him? I can't quite kill him in one hit, but I can strong medicine myself and then kill him probably. Because I got five action points now, finally. All right. Strong medicine. Chug that down. All right. Now I can... Oh, yeah. Now I just one-shot it. All right. Feels good. Don't even need the poison. I also got that hot dog buffing me. All right. Got these scraps. The professor needs five of these scraps. So, getting there, getting there. Alrighty. Welcome back. Were you able to find the humming cave in the purple grass? And here you go. Wonderful, thank you very much. Blessings upon you. Can I buy some medical supplies? You got anything good? Laudanum armor, max HP, restores 10 HP. Nah. Wait, so is that it? I want to, like, I'll leave the nun alone, I guess. What does she want that for? Beats me. Well, gonna try to fight all dead. Running with the worst smelling snake you've ever seen. It's basically a cartoon stink line come to life. Hold my nose and fight it. Man, I wish this snake was me. Because it's a snake. It's a great western turlet snake. And... It probably deals poison stuff. Alright. I probably won't be able to one-shot it. But I'll just do my one-two punch. <clears throat> pretty pretty freaking strong. Now it's almost worth it for me to buff up strong medicine. Because of my amazing combo that I've got now. The only, the only thing I hope is that the turlet snake doesn't one-shot me. Oh, maybe it... Oh, it's not immune to poison. It's really hard for anything to survive that barrage of damage. 20 XP, it got a snake spleen. Spleen is the seat of the fire of humors. Or at least that's what you've been told. You don't have much of a sense about humors. Used in combat, sets an enemy on fire. Snake liver, HP, alright. I don't keep the skins from this one, but I get three venom and two medicine. In that case... I'm going to open up my briefcase full of snakes and extract some of the stuff. And then I'm going to extract some of the medicine. Alright, it's been a while since I've killed a snake and gotten that stuff. Alrighty. I almost picked up my mic to drink it. Fort all dead. Hope it's not skeletons. Well. Well, boy can... Boy can hope that it's not a combat encounter. Sorry, pardon me. Excuse me. Okay. 
decorative crates, just sort of scoping out the land. Trash can, dig my way through it, not without some stench resistance. Well, I have a little bit of stench resistance. All right, let's see. I wonder if I equip these sweet smelling flowers over my little kitty, if I can go in there. Am I wearing a dis disposable cup design sweater? Uh, yes I am, yeah, it's a Dixie cup sweater. Okay, I'm gonna dig, oh nice, I was able to do it. I got an old patrol cap. That would be good, uh, but I can't wear hats because I got the hard hat on, so... Shit. Uh, I'll get my little cute little kitty back, though. Oh, hey. It's a ritual circle. Somebody left their knapsack behind. You dig through the knapsack. What is this, a note? Yeah, it's a note. Cryptic note about ley lines. This is a note from the necromancer to one of his cultist flunkies. There's also an evil-looking leather-bound tome. I'm going to grab it. You got an item. Introductory next mix. Black-covered book written in a black ink on black paper. Is a primer of the arts of the southwestern necromancy, otherwise known as next mix. Gives you the grinning, grinning skull skill. The last thing is a little diary, which you decide to leave there in case the owner comes back looking for it. I'll read it. Seems to have been written by one of the necromancer's cultists. He and several others were reanimating dead soldiers here on the theory that the best undead army would be a little literal undead army. Wait, what? The hitch in the plan came when they raised the officers who decided they weren't going to take... Oh, literal undead army. Uh, yeah, yeah, the officers decided they weren't going to take orders from a bunch of weirdo civilians. The last entry suggests the author and his cohorts are planning on abandoning their station and reposting back to the necromancer, reporting back. But the entry ends abruptly in the middle of the sentence. Fascinating. Well, I feel like I should learn Grin and Skull, right? Like, um... Like, maybe it's gonna make me evil forever, but I'm already evil. So... I'm gonna read it. Seems probably pretty dangerous. Are you sure you want to read it? Man, I guess. I'm going to become a, like a necromancer. Okay, it's your funeral. Whatever, Grandma. You cannot see the words on the pages, but you can nevertheless read them. Your mind becomes stained with grim secrets. You got a skill. Grin and skull. Skulls are scary, and ghosts are scary. So you know it would be double scary? Yes, you do. All right, so it deals 10 spooky damage, I guess. As you turn over the last page, the book vanishes in a puff of black smoke. Spooky! I'm going to examine this note about ley lines. You examine the weird diagram, but you can't make heads or tails of it. You stick the note in your necromancer journal for now. You should check that out. All right. Oh, a collection of clues in my necromancer stuff. The uh, robe receipt you found. Yeah, okay. Oh, the robe receipt you found has led you to determine the necromancer's lairs west of the mountains. Okay. Weird ley line diagram, but I don't understand it. Okay. Well, thanks, game. All right. Did I already look? I already looked in the knapsack. Okay, ignore it. No name. No name. Pepperoni mold. If only I had. Forging. This mass grave is absolutely teeming with those skeletal riflemen. They don't seem to be interested in getting out, but you could definitely jump in there if you're itching for a fight. I'm gonna walk away. I, uh... I don't like fighting skeletons. Alright. But maybe maybe I'll keep exploring up here. And, you know, I guess I'll give it a shot, because maybe they're easy. Who knows? Uh, can I go up this? Climb up into the watchtower and take a look around. Nice view. Oh, that's her if I have binoculars. I can do that. All right, here's the map. Giant map of the region. Table is a little model of the region. We got some turlets. Toilets are all very clean. Flush this one. Flush this one. Flush handles missing. God damn it! Flush that one. Okay, cool. It's funny that the bathroom is in the same same room as the strategizing. All right, what do we got over here? Foot locker still locked. I'm gonna pick it with a needle. This one's open though. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and pick the lock until I like know that I want that one. All right, I got a full canteen, silver bullet, and a hard tack. What's the canteen do? Puts out fires. That's that's useful. Oh, but it's a combat item. 
This one's open. Got three needles, so that's going to be useful. This one contains important military air. Alright, what, what's over here? What are these? These are ovens, right? Shelves filled with the skeleton army's food supply. Examine it. You pick up a box at random and read the label. Desiccated fish eyes. Horrible. Look at something else. Roasted mildew. Bleh. Gilt, grilled dandruff with capers. Revolting. Stewed fish eyes. Nauseating. Candid tongues. Ew. Cured oyster shells. Awful. Smoked mold. Yuck. Crushed mold. Ew. Uh, it's a nice little one of those random generators. Pressed crickets. All right. Well, I think that I've like... Uh, I guess I'll just open these. Skeleton bones, skull chips, and a handful of loose teeth. I don't really, I haven't really found a use for bones yet. Incendiary bullet, silver bullet, and chemical bullet. Okay. And then the last one. Artillery saber. Ooh, cool. I guess that's like the cool. Whoa. Damn. That's a. That's awesome. The army, in its infinite wisdom, wisdom, apparently decided that every soldier needed a sword, even the ones who were only good at using guns. That is right up my alley, I tell you what. Right now I just got this fancy knife that gives me three moxie, which is pretty good, but I think that six pistol attack damage is better because that's 18 damage on fan hammer. Oh man, am I ever going to get rid of artillery saber and the kitty? Who knows? But why don't I, why don't I try to fight those guys now? Yep, 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 ding, 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 ding. All right. Okay. They're of the uh, difficult tier of enemy that has like close to 100 HP now, and they all have high moxie, so it's going to be like impossible to damage them. Great. Perfect. Now, man, this is so bad. Why did I get this? Why did I read this book? Deals two spooky damage for one... Hey, gosh. Okay. Well, I'm going to buff myself with strong medicine. As as I want to do. Hopefully these guys... Because they deal... My, my moxie prevents their damage, you know. Hopefully I don't take too much damage from them. 75 to 78. That's my damage to all of them. Oh wait, this one will hit this guy. So this guy has 87 health. 87, 85, 96. It's not really worth shooting any of them. I guess I'll shoot one of them that has more health than the other ones. I wish that... Oh shit. Oh jeez. Man. Man, it was in the cards for me, I guess. I'm angry. Is it just me or like, is it weird that it's playing the same music like the whole time? Yeah, okay, well the corn, the thing is, is that I buffed my, my toilet pistol, so now it's only one damage away from my higher damage pistol, which I haven't buffed, but I could also buff my higher damage pistol, but I need 500 meat for it. Alright, it's day seven. Like, is there... Like, yeah, yeah. I think it's just repeatedly playing this, like, weird same music the whole time. And it's not changing at all. I don't know. Well, I'm like, no, I'm nothing unless I buff myself by being mad. How many, how many angers can I have on myself? Oh, also, I can buff strong medicine. So, yeah, Fan Hammer is going to take so much experience to get. I'm just going to level this up one time. All right, insult myself. Insult myself again. And that's my limit. But I want to be, you know, the stronger I am, the more likely I am to be able to survive encounters. So, oh, I could also buff myself by two more speed. But I don't seem to be... 
I don't seem to be having many issues with speed stuff, so... Okay, I'll leave. I don't think that there's anything else for me to do there. Do here. Need any help? No, everything's taken care of. She's no mood to talk. Yeah, this is the music that I'm supposed to be hearing when I'm in piano place. I don't know, it's all very... It's all very confusing about the background music. Yeah, yeah, I just... Okay. I need to get my bearings a little bit and then decide where to go. Still haven't found a cact cactus lady for Cactus Bill. This lady's mad. Post office. Was I supposed to do something here? Any mail? No mail for me. Okay, just reacquainting jail. Just want to say hi. Yeah, okay. Ano oh, looks like these wanted posters were read it were added because I solved these two. All right, the Potemkin gang for unlicensed civil engineering and flaunting of construction regulations, less seen in an unregistered settlement north of Dirtwater. Okay, poster shows the location. Want to go check it out? Sure. The Potemkin gang's hideout. That's more my speed, right? Like humans that can be poisoned. Wanted gang. The Black Hat Bandits for horse theft and the selling of counterfeit glue. Last seen headed north toward the old millinery. Interesting. Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. Old millinery. Millinery, millinery, millinery. It's a good word. Okay. Well, now I got two new objectives, so that's pretty cool. All right, they're all the way up here. I'll go to the millinery first because it's a little closer. Also, I wonder if, like... Oh, wait. Cross paths with Wander and Sally. Trade with... I'll see if you got anything, Sally. Oh, but I'm so low on meat. Oh, maybe I can sell... I can sell one of my ma many various and sundry things. Blank postcard. Maybe you should write to your family back home. In case you don't know how the mail works, you send these by going to a building called a post office and giving it to the correspondence wizard who works there. I'll buy. Sure. Apple. I mean, the apple is solid enough, right? 20 HP for a day. Pretty good. Got the fungicide bombs, but I don't need those. Lucky Marigold. Goes on your lapel. It's like a worse version of what I have. I don't think I have a pickaxe. Like, it would tell me, yeah, I have two of these. I really do need another pickaxe, because mine broke when I did an event, but I don't have enough money. What's, what stuff do I have that costs the, like, most, get the most bang for my buck? Let's see. I don't really have anything that's, like, super... Do I have any... Hmm, none of these things say sell only, right? Some of the stuff is like sell only stuff. Nah, I'm, I'm good. I'll make money the old fashioned way. That's new. Do, I mean, should I write on the postcard? I can't just send it. I can't just send a naked, naked postcard. Okay. Let's go back up to the millionaire. HTS, not the A. Can't put it back. All right, let's go in. You walk into the millinery and find five bandits lounging around on big piles of half-made hats. It's the law, skedaddle! The bandits scatter like cockroaches, each shutting themselves behind a different door. Guess you'll have to wrangle them individually. Fine. In fact, even better because I'm better at one-on-ones. We got here brims. Full to the top with brims. Hats look like they're more comfortable to sit on than to wear. This is a, apparently the demo model for a player piano showroom. It's only got three songs in it. They're all children's version of traditional songs that are in their recently invented public domain. And they're all set up to play with just the first few seconds on a loop. The people who worked here must have hated it. What song do you want to set the dial to? Let's go to the, the Yellow Rose of Public Domain. Change the song. Now, it's still playing that same thing that's playing the, the, you know. Man, I don't even understand. Okay. 
I might like refresh my my stream or like my, my game that is at a certain point. But I'm gonna go into this hat room. So many brims, so little time. Is this where they're hiding? Is this where they're hiding? Oh, I see. Well, they're the black hat gang, so I'm gonna jacques this one. Yeah, I was right. It's a bandit that I caught. Man, I'm more of a like. Oh, this is a lot harder. Oh, but did one of them move? Yeah. Jacques. Gotcha. All right, room three. What's gonna help me in this one? Is there gonna be a movement? I don't notice anything different or telling about any of these hats. Liners. Given the quality of the one liners around here, you don't need multiple. Nice. Now here's, a, maybe if I like walk behind a certain one. It's the same text on all of them. Well, I'll try a different room first. Room four. Squatchies. Parts for some weird kind of hat you'd never wear. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to listen for a sound cue. Oh, I see he's sleeping. All right, got this one. Still need number number three or whatever. Wait. Okay. How do I figure out? this one Rams It's one of the hats like backwards or something What is special about Maybe I'll ask the other ones that I've tied up already I mean I should oh I guess I could just accuse all of them in a row, right? Like I could just repeat Jacques. I can't talk to these bandits. They don't want to have nothing to do with me. All right, in that case, whoa, wait. No, I was thinking maybe like the things on the walls were like Roman numerals or something. I'm going to put it on public domain, Joe. Is that whistling I hear? I mean, I don't hear it because I hear the wrong stuff because the sound is off. Hat room number three. I mean, like, I guess I'll just start accusing. Oh. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I wonder if the bandit's in the same one this time. It's not! Oh, man. This is brutal. I know how to find... I know how to find... This, this one's the easiest. Right, it's the black hat. Okay. Gotcha. Room two is it's the movement, right? Yeah. Room two is the movement. Room three is one of the ones I can't figure out. Room four is the sleeping one. And room five is another confusing one. 
I'm worried that I have to utilize the music, the player piano, because I can't hear any different music this time. So it's like ineffectual. All right, let's see. There's no visual differences. any of these. I wonder if there's like something in my bag. No, they didn't give me like a note on what to what to do about them. I wonder if I just wait a certain amount of time if they're like just gonna give me some clue. Maybe I shouldn't have colorblind mode turned on. Also, like, another thing is that I haven't had to deal with one that changes the text in some way about something. Like, for example, you know, like something about this text box being different. Man. Oh, I guess there's an office. I haven't been into the office. I'll pick that lock. Oh, we got to take care of the remaining bandits. God damn it. Okay. Okay, video game. Put it on my public domain home. Maybe one of the bandits likes one of the songs more and starts dancing or something if I'm playing a certain song. If they were to do something, though, they'd have done it by now. Hmm, is it just me, or does this one look like it has kind of a slightly different outline than all the other ones? Maybe I'm just going nuts, but this one to me... This one, the box looks like it has... Like it's... Like it's popping out more. Right? I don't know. No, maybe I'm just going... I'm just going crazy. These ones look kind of fuzzy. Man. Well, check three again. Oh! This one, one of the hats is different. Okay. Better be this one. Alright, okay. So I've gotten that one. Now there's just their, their leader or whatever. In the ever confusing room five. Same, 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 same. Of course, this is the most difficult. The places that they're on are the same. Brims. Oh, maybe like the, the brim boxes have something to do with it? Man, I don't know. Play the Yellow Rose of Public Domain. Man. See, like... It looks like there's something... There's like a line right there. I have to try this one. What's that line? Okay. Holy shit! Man, I don't, I didn't like that. That was, did not make me feel good. Well, I can go in the office now at least. Oh, and I don't have safe cracking. Oh, man. Several years worth of hat magazines, hat trend, hat in the head, hats today, that kind of thing. Alright, what do we got here? It's just a desk. Wore a lot of hats, but it made even more. Man, if I had safe cracking too. But I don't. There's so many places to go back to once I finally get safe cracking. Man, all I got is like horn swoggle and lock picking. You'd think that lock picking would be the same as safe cracking. You know? But apparently they're different. I mean, okay, I guess safe cracking is like a listening thing, whereas lock picking is just jamming something in there. Okay. I'm going to deal with them. 
man. I can't believe how ruthless some of this is. You know, this it's so it's incredibly ruthless. But I don't know anybody named Ruth, and I don't want to have anybody in that prison. Goodbye, bandits. You shoot nice, neat circles through the handits, bandits' hats, and that gives you something to aim for while you execute them. You got an item. Five black hats with holes in them. This is proof that you dealt with the millinery gang, and then also you're devoid of compassion. Justice is served. Well, now I feel like shit. Just had a really hard time finding them, and then I shot all of them. I guess that's the intended effect of being bad. Well, time to take out the Potemkin gang. Hmm. Shot rings out and something buzzes past your ear. You quickly dive behind a rock just in case these two things are connected and not just, say, someone hunting nearby and also there's a bee. Peering carefully around your rock, you eventually spot movement in the underbrush. It's a hunter with an old-fashioned matchlock rifle and a cloak with leaves stuck to it, which is less effective as camouflage than it sounds because all the trees around here are pine trees. You also notice that he's been out here a very long time, which you can infer from the way he is literally a skeleton. I'll attack him. All right, bro. You ready to, you ready to get dunked on? I'm gonna drink my magic drink, and then I'm gonna shoot you with my magic gun. All right, but still, it's not gonna be enough to kill you in one hit. All right, you take your shot. Now I'll take mine. Goodbye, skeleton. All right, I won. Twenty experience, cargo jeans. Whoa, more pistol damage. Things were out of style before your grandfather was born. That said, they've got lots of little pockets for you to keep bullets in and extra gunpowder and stuff. Oh, man. That's amazing. What do I have now? Thick chaps, one armor. Man. Goodbye, chaps. Hello, cargo jeans. That's amazing. We got a bar. We got a real jail. Non-fake horse sales. Genuine TNT and sandwiches. Town hall for an actual town. And an outhouse. Well, let's check out the outhouse. You duck into the outhouse to plan your next move. While you're pondering, you notice something weird. The outhouse has a back door. I'm going to leave through the back door. Alright. Oh, it's the back side of the hideout. Oh, I see. Yeah, this doesn't seem safe. These are all facades of buildings. This is the back of the jail. Turns out it's just flat plywood like a theatrical set. Hmm, the ropes that are holding this thing up don't look very strong. You can knock it over pretty easy, but you should probably hold off until just the right moment. Crap. Okay, well, I'm gonna go re on the other side of the outhouse and talk to some of the people and see what what for I can have done do in here. Alright, here I am. Oh, it just makes it nice and easy for me. Bandit looks distraught. What's the matter, buddy? I lost my belt buckle. Oh, I see. Good luck with that. I'm gonna have to, like, wrangle them all up to the same place. Oh, this one... Okay, so this is, like, far-fetched in crystal version or whatever. This guy... This guy just periodically walks to the different ones, it looks like. So I think I want to get... Oh, this guy walks to whichever building I walk up to the front of. So I think real jail is the one that I want to knock him over on. So I'm going to make this guy walk over to real jail. And she says get away from me. But I want to I want to make her go to the Perfect. So they're both in front of the jail, and then I'll tell this person to go look in front of the jail. Yeah, this is the last guy. Yeah, did you look near the jail? Good idea, I'll look there. Okay. So now they're all in front of the jail. So now, I should be able to go into my outhouse... Walk on over to the jail. At least I hope it's the jail. Or whatever this... I could have done that one, I guess. 
But yeah, here's the jail. Cut the ropes. Crash the fake building falls over on the real bandits. Well, I guess I gotta walk around to go to the other side again. Alright, what do we got here? Hopefully a bunch of, you know, <laughs> they're a bunch of like kookily dookily bandits. Knocked out. You can arrest him now if you want. Man, I'm so mean. Oh my god, I can't believe how mean I am to these bandits. Oh, I got the remains of the Potemkin gang. Kill the Potemkin gang in a way it's a little too gruesome to actually describe. All that's left is three little blobs of tar-like goop. Whoa. Remains. Three little piles of sticky black goo are all that's left of the gang. Serves them right. I guess. Man, not really. Okay. Well, at least I completed two new objectives. Okay, going back to dirt water. Hope I run into a robot soon. You discover what's either an open grave or a very deep rectangular pothole. You jump on in. Well, if it's a pothole, it must have been ha here a very long time because you found the remains of an antique traffic accident. Skull chips, grave dirt, old wedding ring. Who needs a wedding ring? Somebody want a red wedding ring? Go back to the trail. Okay. Going to the jail. Oh, and I can mail off my postcard. Alright, here we go. I'll give you a sticky black goo. Okay, three piles of sticky black goo. Gross, what this, what's this for? It's the Potemkin gang. The, what the, the heck did you do to them? Don't ask. Okay, well, here's your reward. Next time, bring back some less disgusting evidence, please. A thousand meat. Thanks, a bundle. A thousand meat is good meat. Got another bounty for me? Here are the five hats. Five black hats with bullet holes in them. The black hat bandits, I presume? That's right. I guess where they're going, they won't need hats. Here's your reward. Fifteen hundred meat and seventy-five experience. Thanks, a bundle. Oh, and then I get this final thing revealed. Well, I'm back up to the meat that I was at towards the beginning. Got a lot of experience, which is good. I can buff strong me medicine one more time, which is great. Uh, I can also buff... I can't quite buff Deadeye or Fan Hammer yet. Um, but... Man, oh my god, Grin and Skull costs so much experience to level up. But I kind of bet that it's like it becomes amazing, right? If I continue to level it up. Or maybe it's just something that scales really poorly in hard mode. And it's actually bad just the whole time, no matter what. Anyway, I'm going to buff my strong medicine. Alright, I did it. I did it. Okay. Man, I could make an adolescent snake. kind of want to see what that looks like, but... No. Want a poster. The Gherkin Brothers. For kidnapping, bringing kidnapping victims. Brining kidnapping victims. An attempted sale of human flesh for consumption. Last seen headed for the old abandoned pickle factory. Interesting. Yeah, I'll go there. Mark the old pickle factory. Hopefully chasing chasing these guys down won't get you into a real you know. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll... S yep. Oh, perfect. I wanted to go here. Well, I'd like to send a postcard. Alright, let's have it. You write a quick note to Rufus letting him know what you've been up to and that you're okay. That'll be oh, uh, one of them prepaid ones. That'll be zero meat then. Thanks. Okay. Well, in that case, I better better go off to that pickle place. Abandoned pickle factory. Man, this place, this game is kind of a lot like Fallout 1. My El Vibrato beeps. That's what I wanted. Follow the signal because of course you do. Yeah, big robot. Get some. Okay, let's see. I mean, I, it looks like I'd be able to destroy it just by fan and hammer but I might as well drink first and then do it just because I, you know my AP recharges all the time anyway seven oh my god look at that damage 117 to 120 oh man oh it's beautiful it's beautiful I don't even need the poison but then it would have been 45 poison a turn even Oh man, it's so good. El vibrato. I need one more vibrato scraps. I was hoping that that would give me enough. Of course, I need one more. 
high unted pickle factory. Okay, what do we got? It's closed. We got Gretchen Vlas. She was very, very terrible. Patch of pepperoni mold growing out of the grave. I can't see the grave. Okay. I guess I'll just try to go in. You feel a sudden electrical jolt as your hand touches the doorknob. Ouch! Oh no, you're late for your shift. Mrs. Vlas is going to be so mad she might literally bite your head off. Okay, well not literally, probably. Quick, get suited up. You clock in and hurriedly put on your bright green coveralls. Mrs. Vlas, as predicted, is furious. Late again? You better stop taking this job for granted. You think you're going to find a place with a nice dormitory and reasonably priced company store like ours somewhere else? With your skills? Ha! You're doing three shifts today, Buster. Get to work. You're on pickle hopper duty. Start my shift. Pickle hopper duty runs you ragged like always. Keeping the hoppers filled to keep a constant flow down the chutes means you're constantly at a near sprint because you have to manage the the cute shunts to keep the levels equal. Jesus. If you get uneven pickle levels, Mrs. Vlas knows. Nobody knows how she knows, but she knows. A whack from her cane is, is the minimum you'll get. Man. Cuke shunts. That's, that's quite the combo of words. Damn it, damn it, damn it! At the end of the first six hour shift, you get a brief break. You cram a stale cheese sandwich into your mouth while Mrs. Vlas glares at her pocket watch, counting down three minutes to the second. Break's over! Second shift! You get over to the salt tank now! Oh god. Managing the salt tank isn't as strenuous as the pickle hoppers, but it's still a never end tension. The brine concentration has to be constantly monitored and kept at a very specific measurement, which means constant adjustments. Meanwhile, you can feel yourself desiccating from the haze of the salt dust that fills the room. If anything in this place kills you, it's probably going to be salt tank duty. White lung is nasty business. Cough. Cough on your own time and get that salinity back to normal. It's supposed to be 976 parts per thousand. How hard is that to remember? 976, idiot! Please let me out of here. You get another 180 second break before third shift. You spend most of it drinking water. The company doesn't charge for water, but you've had a heard a rumor they're considering it. Break's over, get to the boiler! Oh no, please get me out. Boiler duty means shoveling coal into a furnace. A furnace that runs in a giant tank of boiling vinegar. Stings in here. You've tried to work with your eyes closed, but Mrs. Vlast screams if you drop any coal on the floor. Or if you just let the temperature get too low. Or too high, or just for no particular reason. At least you're used to the smell of bowling vinegar. In fact, you can't smell anything anymore. Let me out, please. 190 degrees, idiot. Not 189. Not 191. What do you think we'll pay you for? You don't really miss your sense of smell. Or not coughing all the time. You don't really want anything anymore. Except to die. Let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. With the gasp, you finally snap out of the horrible hallucination. Or possession, or whatever the hell that was. Jeez. You can still feel the sting of vinegar vapor in your eyes. Guess I'm going in. This must be where the cuke shunt is. Trash smells like sweet pickles. Garlic dill pickles. Gherkins. This trash smells like bread and butter pickles. Corn chons. This trash smells like half sour pickles. You don't even know what those are. Trash smells like dill pickles. Alright. It says factory activation lever. I'm not going to pull it yet. I'm going to go into the cuke hole. Got some cuke shunts. Alright. Got a lever. A lever. A lever. Oh, hey, there's a ghost. You're warning. Cuke shunts are to be operated by qualified personnel only. You approach the ghost. Gotta, gotta. Can't sleep until it's right. You all right there, partner? Can't sleep, can't sleep, can't sleep. Yikes. Oh, I could... I can put him out of his misery. I feel like that's the evil thing that I would do. What are these? A cucumber-obsessed ghost and ghostly floating cucumbers. Man, this fight might be harder than what I bargained for. Depends on how much damage these things deal. Especially because I can't shoot this guy through the... Right? Yeah, I'll just hit a ghostly floating cucumber instead. And is it worth it to... Because I could fan the hammer to kill one of the cucumbers. But I want to save my fan the hammer for the hard guy. So I guess I'm just going to shoot... 34... If it deals 35, 40, 50... There's no way that I can kill one of these, even with the poison damage that I get from shooting. 
All right, let's see. Holy shit. Okay. It's a little little too much for me right now. I guess I maybe his misery wasn't quite worth putting out of. I get so angry that I pass out. Okay, day eight. Did you have a good first week? Oh, I've been playing for a week. Nice. I'm going to insult myself. I guess, like, if I didn't keep insulting myself, then maybe I would, you know, be able to continue stuff and, like, die once, and that's okay. But no. You got to keep going. You got to do what you got to do. Because you got to get what you want. All right. What's what do we got? Where was that mercantile? I wanted to buy something. Or was that only Sally that sold it? I already got one of these. I can buy more disposable binoculars. The shovel. I I got a shovel. No, it's it's traveling. Sally's got them. Okay. I guess I'll go back to the dill pickle place. Hmm. Alright, here we go. Oh, we got a goblin. It's unusual. In this wooded area out in the middle of nowhere, a goblin is constructed a little lean-to with a rough wooden counter. Looks like something a kid would sell lemonade out of, except instead of lemonade, they gotta display a shiny bits of jewelry. Hello, my, many hello to you, good human. Are you to having interest in a fine example of goblin jewelry craft? Uh, I guess I can talk to you. You look over the display of jewelry, which in unusual goblin fashion is cobbled together from bits of scavenging materials. They're shiny materials, though, and charming in an outsider art kind of way. Did you, you, did you yourself these to making? Oh, no. Mine skill is to selling only. These I am buying from goblin artisans and the savings to passing along to you, a customer. I'll examine. I know I'm evil, but I don't want to, like, just do rash things that will be bad decisions. On closer inspection, most of the jewelry on offer is rubbish, but you do spot a few things that are rather nice looking. The goblin notices your interest. Rings are 100 meat for buying. Tough looking ring, sparkly ring, elegant ring. Well, I see that each one is connected to muscle, mysticality, and moxie. I'll buy the elegant ring. Goblin lead ring. Oh, I see what, what the deal is. Plus six moxie, minus four mysticality. The ring is made entirely of lead. It looks pretty nice, but it's definitely giving you some kind of brain poisoning. So thanking you. Here it is. Thanks. I wouldn't mind having all of those, actually, because then if you, if you want to pass a certain skill check, then you just can. Although, what I have right now gives me one to each thing. Oh, the wedding ring. Oh, I could put the wedding ring on. Um, oh, and it's made out of silver, so I can break it down. So this gives me a total of plus two stats, but they're in a stat that I care about more. The only thing that would be annoying is losing, um, losing magic defense. But I I'll equip this for now. 27 moxie unbuffed. That's pretty good. Check out the salt room now. Another ghost, what do you know? Is the gang... Is the gang ghosts? That's pretty weird. St. Linity meter reads 531 PPT. Coarse salt adjustment. 531, 531, 530... Fine salt, salt, coarse salt. You approach the ghost... Salt, salt, gotta salt the salt, salt! You all right there, partner? Salt! Jeez, okay, salt, calm down. I'll leave you to your misery. It looks like I have to fight these guys to continue. So I think I have to come back here when I'm stronger. Oh, well, I guess I'll get another shovel. Oh, I see. Temperature reads 93 degrees. Oh, I guess if I remembered all the things from the the reading, then I could, like, turn it to the right stuff. I'll leave you to your misery. Okay, so I think this was 99... Nine, wait. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Add some coal. 93. 
Got two shovelfuls. Of, oh, I pump it. Oh, I want it to be... I want it to be 90. Oh. 70? Oh, shit. 72. I guess I'll do two. Two. So each individual one does two. So it's up to 80. Now let's see what happens when I do two shovels. It does four. Oh, okay. So each one is just two. So. Oh, it did it by seven that time. Gosh dang it. So, three. 88. Oh, please. 90 degrees. You approach the ghost. It's not right. It's not right. You all right there? The temperature is right. It's 90 degrees, right? Man. All right. If you say so. I thought it was supposed to be 90 degrees. Maybe that's the other thing. Maybe that's the salt salinity. Something like something 97 PPT. Man, I really should have paid more attention to that. Like, I really should have paid more attention to that. Now I don't know what my cuke shunts are supposed to be. Or what my salinity levels are supposed to be at. But I bet if I set all that stuff to the right stuff, then I'd succeed. But I guess what I'm going to do right now is go to the railroad camp and see if I can, like, blow up that thing. Pie Robove, easy as pie. Robove. I'm just going to kill it with this. Easy. All right. Roasted cow tongue. Mysticality by six. Pretty good. Thousands left to go. Okay, I think the time has finally come for me to blow up the thing. This guy's, yeah, he's looking at his watch. Yeah, okay, here you go. Good, perfect, this'll do the trick just fine. Hang back for a bit while I get the fellas to set up the charges and I'll let you do the honors. Smee consults with the other workers and they inspect the rocks for a, for a time. Eventually one of them shrugs, pushes the whole crate of dynamite up next to the rocks and wires up a detonator. All right, let her rip. Wait, uh, don't you have a longer detonator cable? Nope. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Just give me a three count before you hit the plunger so I have time to get under the train. Great. It's ready to detonate. I should give him a three count. Or not. What the holy heck is that thing? Oh my god, I've awakened some kind of golem from beneath the depths of the stones. There's a very large and very angry looking thing. Guy? Standing here. Apparently he's a little peeved at having a year supply of dynamite blown up next to his butt while he was sleeping. Well, I can fight it in a fair fight. I can dance at it for 20 moxie. Might as well use my moxie. Now this is like a lower skill check, so I'm not too worried. Dance at it. <clears throat> the rock monster is extremely strong, but that only matters if it can hit you. And it's geologically slow. Dancing around the creature, you find plenty of places to stick a knife. Widening fractures and fissures created by the initial dynamite blast. Eventually, the entire thing just crumbles into gravel with an angry groan. Booyah. All in a day's work. And, like, how much experience do I got? 184? It's pretty good. I could get my horns, horn swoggling up. I could get my dicker in. Quick on the draw. Yeah, that one's really cheap. Also, I feel like I should just be pumping my HP a little bit because I'm, I'm really, like not doing well on the HP front. Also, like, every pain tolerance level that I get is, like, giving me three to all stats because I can get angry at myself in the mirror. But anyway, let's see if we can go on. Well, now that... Now, well, now, that is a fine day's work as I've ever seen. Much obliged, friend. We'll be getting the rest of the track laid down and head out now here. I'll mark on your route. Mark, route, route, you... Yep, yep. This guy. Okay. I'll mark on your... Oh my god. Okay. Smee. You gotta talk normal. I'll mark our route on your map for you in case our paths happen to cross again. 
We discovered a new map location, the Manifest Destiny Railroad Company Camp. Thanks, but I can't I just ride the train? Got a ticket? Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Of course you don't. Every seat on the train sold out. Sorry, boss. Sorry. Okay. Well. Now it's just a bunch of empty stuff. There's Cray Cray, my bud. New items. Yeah, nothing, nothing too cool. Nothing to shake a stick at. I, I really honestly think something's wrong with that, uh, with that music. Crazy rock pile guy. Okay. Well, here's the other railroad camp I can go to. This is my first time traveling from to beyond the mountains. You're riding down the dusty desert trail, you catch a whiff of the unmistakable scent of snake oil. You follow your nose to the wreck of an old medicine show. Old medicine show. Yeah, I'll check this out now. I'm a snake oiler after all. What do we got up here? Daco Maddox Mutton Chop? I don't know. Well, let's go inside. Alright, what do we got? We got some books. Most of these books are fake, but there's one real one. Oils I Have Known. This book was penned by Doc Galactic, one of the pioneers of the snake oil and trade. It's chock full of recipes for tinctures and balms and such. It teaches you how to make advanced boozes, oils, and potions. Don't mind if I do. I got potionology. Yeah, okay. You can brew up incre impressive snake oil concoctions. Nice. Ironically, the oils from your fingers destroyed the fragile old book while you were reading it. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm guessing that affects the stuff that I can create from my briefcase full of snakes. Uh, we'll see, though. You get the sense that this sofa was pretty nasty even before the wagon got destroyed. You sit down at the alchemistry set and pull out your briefcase full of snakes and snake parts. What do you want to start with? Oh, I can use my snake pieces. Okay, cool. Well, I guess I won't be using these in combat anymore. I'll start with a spleen. You socket a snake spleen into the kit spleen smasher and extract the delicate oils. What do you want to mix it with? Oh, I see. I, I get to mix them with the different ones. Mix, mix it with a liver. All right, what do we got? Flammable bullet oil. You've extracted some extremely flammable oil from a snake and then isolated the parts of that, parts of it that it will fit into a gun. Hot damage. Well, it's pretty good. I guess I can make booze, but I don't have anything else to add to it. I'm going to stop chemistrizing. The former resident's nightstand go through it. Oh, he gives me some alchemical stuff. What's the d most dastardly poisoning thing that I can create. What kind of potions? Now, I, I want to make more combat items. I want to make, mix it with a venom gland. Venomous bullet oil. The question is how much does it poison them for? Like, it doesn't say how much it poisons them. I hope it poisons them for a lot because, you know, I'm, I'm into that poison. Because this poisons the target for five, so I guess what i got to do is just do a little science test when I'm in a combat encounter and try to poison an enemy with that and see if it's more than five, because, you know, all right. I guess I can also keep start wandering now that I'm out here, but I'm going to go to the railroad camp. Off to one side of the desert trail, a skeleton sitting in the shade of a rocky ridge. Looks like some poor traveler must have succumbed to the heat. This game is AIDS. Man. If, if, if by that you mean that it, it AIDS my fun by being a wonderful game, then you're correct. Alright, we got a skeleton sitting in the shade of a rocky ridge. Looks like some poor traveler must have succumbed to the heat. As you move closer to investigate, it appears that the skeleton's holding the book. As you get close enough to see that it's a copy of the Longfellow translation of Dante's Divine Comedy, you notice that the skeleton is in fact reading it, turning the pages, and making little noises in the margins with a pencil. Excuse me, you're in my light. Ah, talking skeleton! <sighs> Sorry, took me by surprise. Eh, I'll fight you. Alright, well he gives me the evil- oh, he just- he just one-shots me. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll wake up. It, it's brutal, tell you what. Well, it seems like the stuff's a little harder on that side of, of the mountain range. Insult myself a couple times. 
I kind of want to like keep wandering until I get another scrap of that material right so just wander a little bit you hear a groaning noise a short distance away and investigate a cow poke is sitting against a rock with his leg bent in a way that seems incorrect what happened dang horse threw a rod and I fell off I think I busted one of my dancing arms I'll give him a ride back to dirt water help the guy on the back of your horse and give him a lift back to town thank you kindly stranger I'd say I owe you one but it seems doubtful we'll ever meet again no problem and I wander again. All right, smoldering hole in the ground. It's the habitat of the southeast western coal snake. Keep to themselves mostly, but they're known to enjoy a fight if one is thrust upon them. Well, snakes are my thing, so of course it's super easy. I'm just gonna immediately destroy it. Okay, snake liver. Got a snake skin for my hat. Got my venom and medicine. Okay. What I really want is another robot. I want my thing, the thing donger to light up and lead me to a robot place got some cheap tequila okay I'm really kind of just gonna see if I can spam wander until I run into a skips a beat flying cow skull man these things are easy I can just shoot it with my regular attack and one shot okay infernal soul fragment it's not what I'm looking for keep wandering a little bit really hoping that I get a robot all right, Southie, uh, it's Coal Snake again. I wonder if, like, the area of the map that I'm in has to do with the uh, kind of stuff that I can find from wandering. Like, okay, here we go. For example, why don't I go to the doctor's place? Which is, like, what? Oh, and there's also other silver plate and stuff I could get. I could see if the circus finally is ready. I could try to fight all those skeletons in Fort All Dead again. Okay, but that guy... Oh, it's down here, isn't it? Silversmiths? No. Burnwall? Where, where is it? Snake Pit? No. Professor's House. There it is. Alright, what do we got here? So now, I mean, he he's not going to want my thing. I need five of them. But maybe I can wander from here, and it'll give me a different encounters. Right? Hmm. Elvibrato Machines. Tromping around the desert. It hasn't noticed me or it doesn't care. Perfect. Oh, it's it's perfect. Easy. Okay. Give me some scrap. I got my scraps. Going on back to the, the professor's house. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And it looks like, I mean, I'm assuming that the stuff that you can get varies depending on the place that you wander from. So, mark that one down in your book, I guess. Good to see you again. Have you got those five piles of scrap yet? Yeah, got them right here. Great, let me just... Mm-hmm, yeah, okay, this will do the trick. Let me just get this running, and then you'll be able to grab a keystone from it. It'll take another five scrap for each one you need. Are you familiar with the lost Dutch oven mine? Grim place, but that's where I found the chassis for that fabricator, wedged behind an unusual pile of rocks. Seems like a good place to start hunting. Lost Dutch oven mine. All right, I'm on it. Now... Seems like those scraps are good, but I, I worry that in the in the mine I'm gonna need to have um, a pickaxe, but I, which I don't have because it got destroyed. But we'll see. Is this a foraging thing? Cluster of gin blossoms again. All right, what do we got? Oh, there's some stinky fissures. I can't get any closer. Well, I better equip my stench resistance. That's the wrong button to push. Oh, but how much experience? I got 239 experience. I still, I kind of, I'm so close to getting another point of dead eye or fan hammer that I think I just want to wait for that. Okay. So, equip my... No, I was using the, uh, it was one of these things. Sweet smelling flowers. Instead of my small kitty cat. Alright. Well, I hope I don't have to keep that equipped. Give me my, give me my kitty back. Man. Alright, give me that kitty. Made it. Apparently having stench resistance is good, though. Lockers are all unlabeled and unlocked. I'll loot them. Got some miner's pants. Plus two armor. You can't wear these if you're over 18 feet tall. Because they'd be way too small for you. Plus two armor. 
gas mask. This thing is was hard to see out of even before they sat in a dusty mine for 15 years. Minus 3 to all stats and 15% stench resistance. I could have used this 5 minutes ago. Alright, miners must have eaten down here to avoid the stench upstairs. Grab what's left. Sausages, instant grits. Alright. I wonder, I haven't even tested like how many of these different food items stack. Oh, but is there how much you can eat before you get full? Or, yeah, stomach capacity. Um, so that's like max buffs that you can have every day. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I love spittoons! Okay. I don't know what kind of tobacco these miners are chewing, but it must be extra corrosive because this brass spittoon has a hole eaten through the bottom and dark stains underneath it where the spit leaked out. Although, oddly, it doesn't seem to be leaking now, and it's half full. I guess the miners plugged the hole with something. Inspect it. It's a sp spittoon. It's disgusting. You can practically see the stink lines coming off it. Come on, let's not do this. All right, fine. Oh, wait. No, I want to inspect it. Okay. I'm, I'm going to inspect it. Inspect the spittoon. Oh, geez. Fine. Okay. Crouch it down and take a careful look at the filthy spittoon. The inside is blackened with years' worth of stains. The death broth inside has a rainbow sheen like a parking lot oil spill, and occasionally a little bubble pops on the surface. You can actually feel a slight warmth radiating out of it from whatever dire chemical reaction has taken place in there. You realize you're holding your breath, not deliberately, but deliberately, but from the human body's natural instinct for self-preservation. I know the spittoons are wonderful in this game. Inhale. Imagine someone made a big pot of chili con carne and left it under the porch. Three rats crawl into the pot, eat half the chili, and then die. A week later, a family of cockroaches takes up residence among the writhing maggots. The cockroaches smoke thick black cigars, which they light with tufts of burning human hair. That's what it smells like. Search it. Fortunately, for you, the rainbow-colored film on the surface of the liquid coats your hand as you plunge it into the toxic stew, keeping it from being immediately dissolved down to the bones. The smell intensifies, and your stomach prepares to ho hose the poisons off your arm with a high-pressure stream of vomit. Keep searching. Your fingers touch something at the bottom of the spittoon. Better pull it out fast while you still have something to pull with. Pull. You pull the world's most disgusting pair of pants out of the spittoon and jump back as the hole at... As the hole at the spittoon's bottom, now unplugged, begins to leak steam and filth. Congratulations. You're now the proud owner of the worst object that had ever been paid to think about, narrowly defeating a leather bondage harness made from the skin of a clown. Spit-soaked pants. Pretty good. These pants look and smell like they were used to line the bottom of a leaky spittoon. And there's a very good reason for that. Two armor and two speed. Although, hooray, I did just get the cargo jeans which give me four pistol damage which is just like way better so you know i don't care about that create a mining supplies good thing i got a crowbar lodestone ring whoa lodestone is a rare mineral that is magnetically attracted to meat it's a rare treasure to a prospector and a real nuisance to a butcher plus 20 percent to meat that's a lot of meat uh kerosene and a can of oil those are pretty normal but like 20 percent and the thing that I have right now is like a sort of a two stat bonus spread across this weird spread. But I think that I might, I think I might equip the lodestone ring for now. You know, get some meat. Already been picked over, empty. Uh, it's all rusted, but I can hold it. All right, lubricate the elevator liberally. Right on down. All right. Fingers crossed. You emerge from the elevator into a deeper shaft. By the light of your lantern, you see exposed meat veins on nearly every surface. It's unusual that there would be this much readily available meat left in a working mine. What were they digging for if not this? Man, it really sucks that I don't have... It sucks so much that I don't have my pickaxe. Can't mine all this meat. Especially because I just got the thing. Maybe there's going to be a pickaxe in here. Oh, it's a broken pickaxe. I feel like I really need to, like... I feel like I need to discover Sally before I can come back here. Okay, this guy's totally out of it. He's gibbering and drooling, doesn't even seem to see you. I'll try to talk to him. Hey, buddy, are you okay? Finally, something I can read effectively. Uh-huh. You wave your hand in front of his face, but he doesn't react at all. Hmm. I'm like scared to progress here 
because I feel like there's a good chance that like it's not gonna let me come back and then I'm gonna miss out on all this meat. Oh, and I want it. I want all the meat. This is really hard. I'm I'm really like upset, but I'll climb down. Requires pickaxe. Of course, it's a gem. Oh my god! I wish I had my freaking freaking pickaxe, man. Guy worked his fingers to the bone digging and then worked his bones to the marrow. The hair on the back of your neck stands up. This guy seems to have gnawed off his own hands before it died. Your heart's pounding. The gouge marks are dark with blood. You have to get out of this pit right now. As you get near the rocks, the voices in your head begin screaming too loudly to ignore. You have to get out of this pit right now. Fine, fine. But I can, I can take it. I can take it. Come on. Really? I guess I'll better come back when I have, finally, a pickaxe. Okay. Well, I mean, at this point, I guess I gotta, like, spam shit until I find Sally and then buy her pickaxe from her. She's, like, a chance encounter. Or whatever. I'll quit my... I got my kitten back. Alright. I wonder if... Sally seems to, like, be around this part. Do some wanders. Oh, new place. This way to the lazy a dude ranch. All right, let's go. Any place that I maybe have a chance of finding a pickaxe, you know. Gonna get a needle from this haystack. Somebody's been washing ferrets in this thing. Yuck. Ferrets apparently smell really bad. I don't know. An old burned crate. Guess it came with the property. Kick it open. Got a lasso. No, it's a combat item. So this rope has already been tied into a lasso for your convenience, which is lucky because you have no idea how to tie a lasso. Disables target for two rounds. That's really good. Um, good for those group encounters that I have problems with. Handful of nails. All right, what do we got? What do we got here? Somebody like itching themselves. Oh God. Okay, what do we got? Hey, like howdy. I'm selling herbal remedies. Care to buy? What kind of herbal remedies? The kind that are gifted to us by Gaia without any interference by human hands. So, weeds? That's a derogatory term created by the man, but yeah, basically. I'll buy one. Got, hey, Groovy, thanks. You got an herbal remedy? This is a little pile of random dried weeds folded up in a sachet of paper. Garbage stored in garbage, essentially. It doesn't do anything. Okay. Cool. What do we got over here? Howdy. Hey, yeah. Howdy, man. What's happening? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, not much, man. We moved into this little patch of land to grow crops, but then we decided it's more natural just to let Gaia grow whatever she wants, right? But that's a lot easier, too. Ah, uh, right on, man. Nate. Where'd you get that hat? Oh, this? A friend of mine made it, man. Uh, I forget which one. Well, you take for it. Well, I have been thinking of trying a new style, man. Maybe, like, one of those hats the army guys used to wear back in the day. Like, it's kind of an ironic statement, man. There's an old fort over yonder that away. I'll swap you if you can find one of those, man. Like this one, you mean? Nice, man. Barter is like commerce, man, except natural. Can you dig it? You got an Adam's strange head sack. This hat is more like a sack woven from red, gold, and green wool. It's like something out of a dream for muscle. Well, if only I was a cow puncher. Yeah, groovy. All right. I can't wear hats anyway because of my hard hat. Manure. All right, what do we got here? Howdy, I'm KK. I'm Louise. Louise Lathrop. While well, long face, Louise. Oh, geez, basically because I'm stuck here farming with a couple of dummies who don't know how to farm a dang thing, so they just let the weeds grow and call it natural. I'm so sick of eating dandelions, I could scream. Well... Why don't you leave? Haven't gotten any meat or else the prospects or any other prospects to anywhere to go. I mean, dandelions are terrible, but they're better than eating dirt. This is such a mess. How'd you get in this predicament? I headed west after graduating bacon school, fell in with these guys because they talked a big game about natural grains. Fool that I was, I didn't realize all they were really interested in was getting silly on loco weed, not doing any work. Mm, so you're looking for work? Gosh, yes, desperately. The only trade I know is bacon, though. You know somewhere that's hiring a baker? Heck, even unpaid would be better than this if it comes with room and board. I just want to get out of here. I don't, sorry. Shucks, well, if you hear anything, please let me know. Will do. 
So, uh, as Power's asking, is hard hat no partner like difficulty settings handicaps? Yeah, essentially, at the beginning of the game, in, like, the tutorial area, you can choose to put on the hard hat, which makes the game harder, and also you cannot remove it, and it does not have any inherent stats. Although, it can still be buffed, so, like, I have it silver-plated and snakeskin hat-banded, but the hard hat, like, makes the game harder. And then also, no partner, just, there's a point in the game where you're about to leave the main zone, and you can choose one of three different partners to take along with you, and they're like a companion, and you can also choose to not take anyone with you. So I chose to not take anyone and pick the hard hat. So it's like seems like as difficult as this game could could be made. Huge supply of stuff. Haggers agave. Don't have any foraging. Oh, this place would be like wonderful if you had foraging. Patch of loco weed. Man. Oh, if only I had foraging. Wait, was that a is it a Frisco Poppy? Frisco Poppy, clown wart. Shockweed plant, nothing, nothing. Loco weed, yeah, okay. Man, I want the loco weed to give to Cray Cray, my horse. Can't go into any of these houses. Yeah, I'll leave. Okay. Lazy A Dude Ranch. Um, so I basically need to find a place that wants a baker so that I can, you know, get this lady a job because she seems like an honest worker. Right, what do we got here? Come across a goblin marching around in the woods. They are taller than a typical goblin, probably because their boots are taller than the typical goblin boots. In fact, these boots are so tall they must be half stuffed with socks to keep the tops from jamming the goblin in the groin. The goblin sees you and marches over, attempting to look intimidating instead of awkward. Also, hey, hey, thanks for following Falconer27. Uh, I hope that the other 26 of you come and, and follow as well, but for now, I'm happy to have you. Hey, hey, human. Hey, what are you doing to this in this place? This is my ground to stomping. You mean your stomping grounds? What? I'll talk to it. Your boots, which are very tall, I am seeing. Yes, tall boots to having, so also tall am I. That's cool, but they are uncomfortable seeming very. I to having no sensation in my feet now, so this is fine. Hmm, I could steal them if I had three horns swoggling. I'll leave the goblin. Oh, duh. I, in my mind, I was like, I'll just bump up my horn swoggling, and then I'll just do that again, but it's a random encounter, so I can't just random, I can't just make it randomly happen. But it seems like I'm at the point where horn swoggling is going to be more important, so might as well. Um, potionology can be upgraded as well. Also, my miscellaneous skills is filled up. So, like, does that mean I'm never gonna be able to get any other miscellaneous skills, or... Like, I really hope so. I hope I can, like, scroll down at some point. But, anyway. Wander again. Seems like there's a chance you can get to your, like, the same stuff. Alright, find an abandoned crate with Fort All Dead stenciled on the side. Open it up. Smelling salts, canteen, whiskey. Alright, it's just some regular stuff. They're just gonna keep wandering. I really wanna fight Sally the Traitor. High top a nearby pine tree, you see a pine cone with a bullseye painted on it. There must be an artistic bird somewhere nearby. Shoot the pine cone. With a flourish, you draw your pistol, shoot the cone, twirl your pistol around several times, and then reholster it all without even slowing your horse down. 20 experience. Alright. It's kind of just like an endless grinding sort of thing. I wish I could speed that up, though. There's a dusty wooden crate lying near the trail. It turns out to be full of old dynamite. That's uh, probably not something that should just be lying out in the sun. I'll take it. Oh, man. Five dynamite? That's pretty good. Mm. Keep on wandering. All right, okay, here we go. Uh, as the trail curves through a patch of marshy ground, you catch a whiff of something worse than swamp gas. It's a stank above, cow skull floating in a cloud of noxious vapors, and it saw you even before you smelled it. Well, I'll fight it. I haven't fought one of these yet, but it looks like it's harder than a pyro bow, 92 HP. Uh, I bet I can kill it with my buff. So I use strong medicine for two action points, and then my remaining three action points. Yeah, here we go, fan hammer. 
Nice. Pretty overpowered. Okay. 20 XP, brass bull ring, yeah, cow fangs. You really crushed that stinker. Not a bad source of experience points. Okay. Oh, skeleton trudging towards you covered with mud and muck and smelling like garbage juice. I think... I think I fought this skeleton before and succeeded. Seems like there's a swamp around here that I haven't, like, made it to yet. So he's got 90. Can't quite deal it. I just gotta do my 1-2 again. Chug a lug. Blast him. Okay. Some normal stuff. Seems like Sally can be anywhere, right? Although I never... I've never gotten Sally to trigger from wandering, you know, just from traveling. A crate line and nothing. Alright. Oh, wait, what do we got here? Some more stuff. Sulfur matches. I've gotten one of those before. Patent, patent medic. This substance cures poisoning by making you vomit, but luckily medical science has confirmed that vomiting is the cure to basically every type of poisoning. Cures poison. This patent medicine uh, promises to increase the volume and viscosity of your blood. Get back on the trail. I mean, at a certain point, I'm just going to have to sort of, like, stop wandering because it's a pair of binoculars. Okay, I'll take them. Then again, like, what am I, what do I stand to lose, right? I can just wander forever. It doesn't seem like it takes up time. Reach for the sky, clown! You quickly turn around and see a grizzled-looking man in all black clothes except for his hat, which is white, with brightly colored spots. He's pointing a gun at you. Who are you calling a clown? I've never been to rodeo. Um, it's true. You don't have a clown's markings. Man, you mean like a stupid polka dot hat that only a clown would wear? You may be no clown, but you're a fool if you think I'll accept your insults. Bring it, Chuckles. All right, you're going down. Oh, it's a clown hunter. I think I can just kill him. No, I can't. I got to do my one too. Chug a lug in real life too. Man, so brutal. Maybe I get some, I got the colorful hat made from some weird kind of leather that's white with colorful spots on it. That would be really good if I could equip it, but I cannot because of my hard hat. Also, there's that circus that I just can't seem to get into. Shoot the pine cone. Man, you can just wander to grind... to grind stuff, like, endlessly. Alright, my El Vibrato. Open it up. Nice, more scraps. Punch card complicated. This is a piece of thick paper with dozens of square holes punched in it. Looks like the ones they used for the census back in 90, but way more complicated. Excellent. Well, now I can go back to, uh... The professor's house. Oh my god, it's Sally's wagon. Thank god, I've been hoping for that. You bet, Sally. Give me your... Give me your shit. Give me that pickaxe. Alright. Thank you. Okay, so... Any other thing I need? Oh, teaches me safe cracking. I really gotta get it, because... It, it puts me down to, like, no money... But man, I really need this. Time to get cracking. When you're done reading it, you lock it up in a safe that turns out to be slightly too difficult for you to crack, so it's gone forever. Back in 90. Is this post-apocalyptic? Yeah, I don't really know. I think it's like... I think it's in, in the world of loathing, which is like a different universe, but contains references from our world and man but that's a really good question because we're in like the 1800s and stuff i don't i have no idea it's like maybe there's like a narrator that's omnip um om, omniscient or something i think i think that there's like an omniscient narrator but i could be wrong okay well now i'm loaded up with stuff so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to back to lost dutch oven mine Oh, also see if I can... Oh, nice, it's a scrolly wheel. So you can... You, there's no limit to the number of, like, passives and skills and stuff you can have. Okay, safe cracking. Upgrade it. 200 to, ex to do it again. I need three safe cracking for some of the safes that I've been coming up against, though, so I'll probably spend that on that soon. 
Okay, give me that. All right, sweet smelling flowers, so I can pass. All right, and then I'll re-equip my kitty cat. It gives me my pistol damage. Okay, here we go. And the reason why I'm walking really weird is because I have a perk called Stupid Walking. Which I can toggle on and off, but I've just been doing it the whole time. Okay, what do we got? Finally, I can mine it. Unrefined meat nugget. Four to two meat. You know, it's not quite as much meat as I'd hoped it would be. But I'm still happy. Plus 20% too. And you know, it adds up. Feels good. Feels good. About paid back for the pickaxe already. Yeah, I'll leave this guy to his gibbering again. Maybe now that I have a pickaxe, I can get this thing. Got an effluvious emerald. If this gem is half as valuable as it is pungent, you're in the money. And you should probably wash your hands before you spend it. Alright. I wonder if there's ever a... See, like... Some of the items in the inventory say that they can only be sold. And other inventory items just are worth a lot of money. But I, like this, I feel like, I feel like there's got to be another use for that. Yeah, like this one says just sell it, which kind of implies that there's no value other than selling it. But that one doesn't say that. Man, tell me I have to get out of this pit right now. Can I just leave like this? Okay. I'm gonna go to the other caves and try to mine in there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Do my buff. And do my blast. You're going down, robot. Okay, 20 more experience, more El Vibrato. Oh yeah, I gotta go back to the professors too. I got my kitty cat back, okay. Oh yeah, these strange things here. Is there anything that I can mine in this? I didn't really think about it. I don't think there is anything I can mine. I've already been in that portal. Yeah, yeah, meets the currency. So, silver plater. I guess I could go silver plate some other stuff. Mm, big apple, no, I don't need that. Once I get my safe cracking up a little higher, I'm going to have to start going back to like every single location I've been to just to try to crack the safes. Old millinery. Hmm. Let's see. Dynamite dance. I haven't been there in a while, but I'll go to the professors. There's no more caves up in this northern half. All right. So then safe, or hard foraging is one of the other skills that I need to get, presumably from a book of some kind. Alright, dude. Hey, you know anything about ley lines? Yeah, what if you want to buy meat? I guess... I mean, that's a good question because, like, you can buy meat like hot dogs and stuff, but you just spend meat on it. Maybe, like, the meat you spend is... Maybe the meat that, like, you use as currency is, like, trash meat or something. You know anything about ley lines? I don't hold much with that mystical mumbo-jumbo. It's very unscientific. But it does come up in my research from time to time, so I can give you a basic overview. He draws some curved intersecting lines on a piece of paper and explains how they relate to local geography and so-called mystical forces. Most of it goes over your head, but you think you got the basics. You got a ley line diagram. This is an illustration of the basic principles of ley geography. Simple enough to be understood by a layman. Thanks. I'll leave him alone. Oh, but does this work now? Oh, okay. I can fabricate a key. El Vibrato Keystone. Professor assures you that this is... Oh, it opens El Vibrato locks. Maybe I can go back there. Can I make another one? I don't have five scrap. Okay. Was there... something in the Humming Cave that needed a key? Or is... That's just what I took out of it, right? Like, okay. Man, this game is such like a text adventure in that you just need to constantly check everything to see if you can interact with it in a new way or whatever. 
Okay, so that, not going there. Monolith, dark monolith. No, nothing. At least you can instantly piece out it anywhere you want. Okay, so... Gustavs and Gulch. Maybe there's something to mine in there. Basically any outdoor location. Left a bundle of dynamite, I'll take it. Man, just free stuff from wandering. Oh, this is the place with the goblins. Alright. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a Metroidvania too. I've already raided the deli. I think that there might have been a cave at the end of this though that maybe has... Oh, maybe there was a safe. Well, here's the barrel cactus that I can't get. Okay. Oh, I didn't have a needle. Lock picking in a needle. How many needles do I got? I think that's in this section. I only have one needle. I guess I'll just pick one of these. No, I'd rather keep the needle on me though. That's the thing. I'll go to Cavern Canyon. I guess I can... Oh, this is the spider place, right. Is there anything I can mine in here? Right, I can't go back there. Alright, this is the danger spider room, which, yeah, it doesn't let me go through. Okay, but maybe I can find something to mine in here. Just a bunch of corpses, tragically killed. Oh, and I already recruited this guy from this kitchen. And here's a bar. Yeah, which is nothing. Okay. Well, it turns out that, like, my hor my excitement at, like, being able to mine everything might not actually have any implications. Here we go! 42 meat! Not worth it. Alright. And when I get foraging, forage everything. Alright. Anything to mine in here? Nope. Oh, this is where I got my initial pickaxe. Oh, I don't even know why I'm going to Shaggy Dog Cave. This place is ridiculous. This place is just a big joke. It's like the longest text thing in the world. Okay. But I will wander. I feel like there's supposed to be a location right here. Yeah, empty whiskey bottle. Pop it. Alright. Like, and you can explore to, like, have a chance at finding locations and other stuff. Discover an open grave. We've got a gold skull to just sell it, which is good. Handful of old coins, just sell them. So, it wasn't enough to get a gold tooth. This person had their entire skull replaced with gold. I wonder if they survived the process. This is a little sack of coins, stack of coins that are either from a time or place when or where coins were or are used as currency instead of meat. Get back on the trail. And also, like another thing, I'm looking for a crystal sphere so that I can complete a ritual that I have all the other pieces to. Oh, there's more dynamite. Um, but I can't find anything that's like crystal sphere like. I can't seem to, at least. Uh, El Vibrato, another one of these guys. Oh, this is an easy one. I think I could probably just kill it with one shot. Yeah. Okay. Some scraps. I'll just wander one more time. I feel like, you know, it's like only good to wander. Hellcalf. I haven't fought one of these before. But it's going to be really easy. I almost can just kill it with a regular shot, but... Pew, pew, pew. Bam the hammer. Okay. Experience. Cow tongue, meat, extra thick leather. Okay, moo. And one more. One more one. There's some, some stuff. Okay. Pretty soon... I should go... Oh, I guess I'll go... To the silver plater and silver plate something oh what do we got here a burly grizzled man in leather well everything is busy peeling the skin off a no longer recognizable animal he looks up at you and growls brandishing his skin and knife as if to say bother me and you'll be next bother me and you'll be next yeah i got that i can bother him to fight i can show him my skin and knife back away or trick him out of his pants i guess i'll trick him out of his pants because i just put a point in horn swoggling so might as well use it Say, what kind of skins are your pants made of? Hmm, some of this, some of that. Coyote, mostly. Thought so. Aren't you worried about coyote mites? What? Look, boy. I think I know a thing or two about cleaning a hide. 
No, listen, coyote mites are resistant to regular cleaning because they live in the pores. You haven't heard of them? Uh, and when they detect your body heat, they crawl out in tiny needle-like legs by the hundreds looking for the hairs on your body crawling into your pores. People have gone insane from the itching. I am kind of itchy in the leg area. I mean, I wasn't before, but... Oh my gosh, you have to get rid of those pants right now. Go find a river or something to jump into. The skinner runs away frantically and pantslessly. Something skin pants. These pants are made of the skin of some animal you can't identify. Rhinoceros, maybe? Are these rhinoceroses around these parts? Meh, sucker. The only thing is, I already have good pants. But this guy, this guy can silver plate my stuff. And, oh wait. Oh, he had the super crazy expansive thing. I mean, all the stuff's pretty expensive. Now that I think of it, I only have 700 meat left. I don't really want to spend it buffing up my general gobs pistol because it does three damage if you buff a weapon at this guy it gives plus three damage so then that would be nine to eleven but my toilet pistol already does six to seven so it's like not that it's like a pretty good it's like 20 percent ish but the reason why is because my toilet pistol i think i'll just go there and use buffs my toilet pistol poisons things but skeletons can't be poisoned so that's what sucks. This Fort All Dead is where I wanted to go. And there's all these guys. Oh, I guess I can use my binoculars. Scan the horizon, but don't see anything. Did I just waste my binoculars? That would suck. Man, I don't know where, the, where they would be if I had them. I think I might have just wasted my binoculars. Okay. So, in this... In this mass grave, there's a combat encounter. There's a ley line. Now, walk away. So, first we'll see what kind of buffs I can give. Oh, I do have enough to give myself a safe crack in level 3, which would allow me to crack the safes I need to crack, but I could also spend it on getting, like, a bunch of HP buffs so that I could be able to beat this combat encounter. <sighs> to be honest... I'm just going to grab safe crack, and I know I should grab something else, but I want that. Okay, I have 4 XP, I can get nothing. But here, let's let's buff. Let's buff up. So I got, I can have one drink. Oh wait, three potions, one drink, and two eats. So what do I want? Mysticality by 6, pointless. 10 XP, used in combat. Okay, maximum HP by 10 for the rest of the day. That's a potion. Oh, I can specifically look your food, booze, potions, combat. Okay, so potions, I can have three potions, and I only have a couple. That gulch goblin lollipop's bad. Depressed rancher candy, melee damage by 7. That's really good, but I don't do melee. The Stardust increases all your stats by 5 for the rest of the day, but that's part of the ritual, so I don't want to use it. Come on, Chicory. Man, Spooky. They don't even do Spooky damage. Or maybe these are the ones that do. I guess I'll just use the Blood Build and Tonic. But none of the other stuff. It's not really helpful. Okay. Alcohol. What do we got? I can drink one thing. All my stats by one, mysticality by three, moxie by three, melee damage by seven. Man, I could really stack a lot of melee damage buffs. Spike coffee speed by one, muscle by three, max HP by five. How did you find this game? This is the, uh, this is a, made by the same people that made Kingdom of Loathing, which is like a browser-based sort of MMO type thing. And I, I played Kingdom of Loathing a bunch when I was in high school. And so when I saw this was coming out, I was like, first of all, I didn't think they were going to do anything more. So I was surprised, but also, of course, I, that's, that's why I'm playing this, because I love Kingdom of Loathing so much. I think that what I'm going to do is moxie it up, because they, uh, they are ranged attackers. So the more moxie I have, the better. You drink the cheap wine, wishing you had some cheap cheese to go with it. Oh, well, it'd be tawdry to complain about it. C'est la vie. Nice. 
And I can eat my two things. Mr. Kelly by six? No thanks. Muscle by three? Maybe. Muscle by three? Not really, actually. All stats by one? It's okay. Speed by three? Not very good. Armor by five? That's probably good. Goblin sandwich? No. Speed by one. Range damage by ten? Now that is something. Max HP by five. Muscle, Mysticality, and Moxie. But I need to keep the turnip because the turnip can be silver plated for 20,000 meat, apparently. So, the thing is that the lead pie seems so good that I might want to save it. So, like, can I eat? Can I stack hardtack? What's my armor? Can I, like, see my armor anywhere? Is my armor like a visible stat anywhere? Maybe it's here. Armor. Reduces the... Oh, it's from melee attacks. Gosh dang, I thought it was physical damage. It's pointless to have armor. I guess. Yeah, how beefy you are. No, it's really grit that I'd want to buff, but I can't really buff grit. Man, I'm probably going to lose. Okay thing is I need I need all these things uh, I guess I could give myself this goblin lead ring for even more moxie 30 moxie that's pretty good what have I got right now the brooch okay stomach maybe is there a food that gives me moxie there's a food that gives me one moxie Oh wait, increase your moxie by five, but decreases your other things by three. I don't care. You eat the sandwich, it's pretty nasty. I got goblin sandwich, not sure what I was expecting. Man, look at all my buffs down there. Man, if I can't beat these guys with all these buffs, I'm going to feel like a fool. Oh, I also should equip six to seven, six to eight. This is better by one maximum damage range. But I should still have it. Alright. Moment of truth. Okay. So these guys have a shitload of hit points. Last time they just all wiped me out in a single go. I also have dynamite. I have 23 dynamite. I could just pick them off with this. Okay. Here's, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm really going to try to game the system. This is really like, the whole combat system is broken and stuff. When you lose a combat, you uh, you wake up in town. So basically you can come right back, but... And it also makes the day progress by one, and I don't know what that means yet. Like, I don't know if you run out of time eventually. I mean, I could just do that. I have 19 more dynamites. I could just do that on all these guys. I guess I'll also chug my strong medicine. All right, let's see. So my Moxie is 42. How much is Fan the Hammer going to do? My Fan the Hammer can kill one of them. So I guess I want to kill the one with the most hit points. 77 with Fan the Hammer. Now the question is, am I going to die? It, or if I let these two kill me, or if I let these two attack me, am, am I going to die then? I only have 55 hit points. Well, let's let's just cross my fingers and see what happens. Okay, fan the hammer. Oh my god. Turns out that buffing my moxie up was really good. Yeah, dynamite doesn't use up your turn. So like... Certain things it says, so like strong medicine doesn't use up your turn because it's like a buff or whatever. But yeah, so like, it'll have in parentheses, won't, won't end your turn. So I'm a snake oiler, so I can make snake medicine and like snake venom stuff. Oh, I still haven't tried this out yet. Holy shit, flammable bullet oil deals a lot of hot damage. So some of these things are actually pretty good. Pantomimetic, yeah, I'm not poisoned. But what's that other thing that I made? Uh, this is just basic venom vial. Now, I don't know if that does... 15 poison. So I have an ability 
that makes all my poisons poison for triple the amount. I don't know if this would do 15 poison or if it's just calculating the fact that I... Man, a lot of these are pretty good. Okay, well in this case, they do such little damage to me that I can just shoot them, fight them fair. Boosh. Boosh. I could have even done it without the dynamite, I guess. Man, buffing your base stats. I, could, I like, it was impossible to fight these guys like a little while ago. But I did it. 20 experience, chemical bullet. Poison's an enemy. Wait a second. Was that it? It's just a fight that I can do again and again for no, serves no purpose. Oh my god, there's more this time though. Okay. Here, let's see. Well, I, I might have just screwed up. Okay. I guess I can always dynamite some again. So the thing is that the gun guys, the gun guys don't really worry me. This guy worries me. But he's hiding behind the other guys. I have to kill these guys first. Man. And I have to kill this one. I want to fan the hammer on, I guess... Oh, wait, how much damage would my regular shot do to this guy? I don't know. So, like, basically the general way the game works is that melee guys do more, do less damage to, like... Okay, the way that it works is your muscle increases melee damage and melee defense. Mysticality increases, increases ranged magic damage and magic defense. And moxie is, like, gun damage and gun defense. So these ranged guys are going to be weaker to my ranged attacks than the melee guy is, because I'm guessing he's more of a muscle guy. Yeah, and mysticality. Okay. 40 to 42. Man, I should really just wipe out one of them, though. I don't know. I'm going to just do this and see what happens. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's not fine. It's fine. So now I'm down to 17. Man, I'm going to like use up a shitload of dynamite. <laughs> uh, do these all end my turn? These don't end my turn either. Won't end your turn. This guy's got 33 HP left. What's What do I have that deals the closest to 33 damage? Incendiary bullet. Chemical bullet. 15 poison doesn't work against these guys. Silver bullets are pretty good, but they're also used for other stuff. I know I'm dying, dude. Here. I think that I'm going to chemical bullet this guy. Okay. And I'll fan the hammer this guy to end the turn. But he has 91. 40 to 42, 40 to 42. 55 to 57. One hot damage and set it on fire if it's flammable. Okay, here's what I got. I got to drink something. And that heals my poison. Snake medicine. It's only 5 HP, but it doesn't end my turn, so. Yeah, a little baby heal. A little baby heal. Yeah, a little more. Just fully top it off. Looks. I thought I'd be able to just grind out this fight repeatedly, but... I think it's going to be a little tougher than that. Okay. 15, po but poison doesn't matter. I guess I'm just going to dynamite the shit out of this guy. Man, when in doubt. Dynamite's just so broken. Like, no matter how big of a fight it is, I guess it's probably going to fall off a lot later. It's already fallen off a bunch. I really, oh, I should just dynamite this guy. Because he's the only one that really deals damage to me. Duh. Should have done that from the first start of things. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll stop trying to grind out this fight then. And yeah, I'll just fan this guy. Easy. Okay. I guess if I always dynamite the melee guy, then I stand a chance. But that's still using dynamite. 
Okay, I got 40 experience that time. See, the fact that this is like a repeatable source of experience, that's like what's cool about it. I only got 64 total, though, because I spent all my stuff on fucking safe cracking before doing this. The fact that I have so many buffs makes me want to try fighting those ghosty boys or something. But, all right, let's see. I guess I can just start looking for all the safes out in the world. So basically, now that I have safe cracking, I can get safes. Oh, I think some of them were in Fort All Dead. I think there are safes in here. Or at least one safe. Or maybe there's just toilets. Alright, in the barracks. No, there were just these. Oh, there's a back door. Oh, right. It just leads here. Okay. So, nothing in Fort All Dead. Lazy a Dude Ranch is where the people who smoke the wacky tobacco are. The Pickle Factory is the place, yeah, with the ghosts. I guess I'll just, you know, go to these one at a time. What's this? A loud thwack noise draws your attention and you follow the sound to a man in a once white apron who's butchering a bighorn sheep or some other large desert animal with an oversized head or oversized and heavy looking meat cleaver. As he's hauling the implement up to his shoulder for another blow, he catches sight of you and hisses with a wild look in his eye. Who's there? Don't test me, boy. I'll chop you up like this goat or whatever it is. Yikes. Oh, man. Hornswoggling turns out to not be too bad. I can hornswoggle like a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna trick him out of his carcass. Hold on, is that... Oh, jeez, look at the horns it is. That's a blue-crested mountain goat. A what? They're super endangered. There's only like a dozen left. Ain't surprising they're real tasty. No, look... It's wildly illegal to kill these. If the marshals catch you, it's years in the slammer. You'd better run and get out of that bloody apron before someone spots you. I'll bury the carcass. The butcher thanks you and runs off in a panic, leaving you with as much meat as you can carve off as whatever it is. 29 meat? Okay. Wait. But the apron. Nah, whatever. Okay, is there a safe in here? No. Nah, I can buy some medical supplies. Nah, I don't really need any of these. Laudanum. I mean, I guess these are okay, but... Oh, I can sell her stuff that... Um, that's in my sell-only category or whatever. Like my new skull that I just got. Alright, what do we got? Where's that skull? Oh, I still have my disposable binoculars. Nice, it didn't use them up. Okay. Gotta find the skull. Here it is. Gold skull, just sell it. Sure. Gold tooth, not just sell it. It's going to be a use for those eventually. And then the meat ore is also something that I can just sell. Alright. Oh, it's it's sorted by alphabetical order, so I might have messed up. Oh no, it's unrefined is the first one. Yeah, sell all these nugs. Okay, there we go. Got a little bit of money. Alright, the rescue mission, Fort All Dead. Checked all these places. Lost, last, lost, lost Dutch oven mine. This was the facade place, right? Yeah, I think this was the facade place. So there's no, there's no chests or safes in here. The big apple's just a big pile of poop. Some thwack thwack noises lead you to the sight and sight of a goblin chopping down a large cactus. When it sees you, it waves its axe at you threateningly and makes some angry sounding noises. Oh, is this my chance to get the ability to harvest stuff? Hey, it's a human person. Hey, human person, away to going. It's my cactus that's mine and not yours. Talk to it. Um, hello. How are you? I will not your cactus taking. Good, yes, good, hello. Why are you to chopping a cactus down? Why? What a lot of uses. To building, to burning to eating little toothpicks. I'll trick it out of its meat. I was really hoping I'd learn how to forge. Would you like some help to cutting these down? Yes, I do thanking. Help, yes, and meat to paying you. Great. You'll have to show me what to do first to doing. Watch them work. The goblin chops down a cactus to demonstrate, but you don't think you've quite got the idea, so you have him chop down another one, and then another one. By the time you think you understand, all the cacti are cut. Fortunately, he paid you in advance. 21 meat. It's nothing, dude. It's nothing. All right. Any? Oh, it's just gone. Okay, big poop, pile of poop. 
Old millinery. One of these places has to have been the place with the safes. Oh, I know it was in here. Man, this place was horrible. I hated it. Here we go. Let's see if it was worth it. Uh, crack that safe. Safe contains an extremely broad-brimmed hat. Prototype Stetson. Never made it to market. The public just wasn't ready for such a wide brim. Well, it's really good, but I can't equip fucking hats because I have the hard hat on. Oh well. Old mission. I wonder, wonder if there's like any kind of questy stuff that I could... Oh right, relics. Spot for a skull, spot for a pelvis, finger bone. Yeah. The spot I saw an empty coffin just inside the catacomb door. Oh, don't worry about that. We're just storing that for an escape artist. An escape artist? Yes, he was taking his act on the road, but needed to lighten his luggage, so he gave us a generous donation in exchange for storing it. Okay. Anything else you can say? I'll have have them all back before you know it, sister. Well, it's hard to find these things. What is this one? All right, this is spooky stuff. Precariously balanced pyramid of skulls. Kick it over. Oh, right, these are the skulls that it's not a good idea to fight all of. But now I'm a lot stronger than I was before. Alright. Oh gosh, they're gonna destroy me. Okay, 72. Easy as pie. Well, first I'll chug. Chug a lug. Alright. Here we go. Man, 48 to 50 damage on a regular attack. But I got a fan hammer if I want to put one of these suckers into the ground for good. Also, could I just... Could I just pop one of these guys? I kind of want to just pop one of them with one of these. But they don't quite do as much damage as I'd like. 65 to 67. Well, I guess if one of them has 65 hit points... Okay, I'm just going to pop this one with this thing. Flammable bullet oil. Okay. Why is its health bar still there? I don't like that. 72, 66, 70, 61. 72, fan the hammer. Okay. Oh shit! Fuck! No, I didn't, it didn't matter! It didn't even... It didn't even I should have killed one more of them. Oh, and I lost all my buffs. I had a bunch of buffs, and I just lost them all. Well, I'll try to do that later. Okay, I only got like three more minutes, too, of the, of the stream. So I'm going to try to, like, figure out what I got to do in this re remaining time frame that I have. Maybe I got a letter back. All right, I did. Package came for you. Package from Rufus. It's a package from your younger brother Rufus. He's weird, but he's a sweet kid at heart. Thanks. What have we got in here? Open it. Dear bro, or dear bro, I thought you might be able to use this. You got an item. Portable, alche portable alchemistry set. This crate contains all the regents and fluids and stuff that you need to get up some serious alchemistry. In, and the crate itself converts into a convenient bench to put them all on. Installs an al alchemistry set in your room with the jewel. That's great, kid. Wait, why did it just become sepia? Oh. Nostalgia mode unlocked in the options menu. Sniff. This, this must be... Nos or wait. Is this nostalgia mode or is... Okay. Remember how great things used to be? Oh, okay. So this is, n this is regular mode. Nostalgia mode. Regular mode. Nostal I guess I'll be in nostalgia mode for the rest of tonight, but it's probably not going to be long. Got my jail going on. There weren't. There's, why would there be a safe in the hot dogs place? Oh, one thing though is these saucy dogs. They're so strong. Six moxie for the rest of the day. It's crazy. Like, any of these, if I pump them enough, like, that's going to make me invulnerable, basically, to, to anything. The only thing, I'll buy one more, but I don't have that much meat. It's like I'm strapped for meat here. Oh, and another thing that I can do 
is get my uh, lodestone ring back on for more meat gains. I guess I'll just install this uh, install this thing into my room. All right, where can where can I install this? Probably over here. Postcard on this little table. Oh, I got another blank postcard. Oh, I can binoculars this. I don't see anything. Oh, I probably just have to use it from this. Okay. Assemble it. You install the alchemistry set next to the window. Looks good. You sit down at the alchemistry set and pull out your briefcase full of snakes and snake parts. Well, some of these things were pretty good. I wonder if, though... I'm, I just want to see all these things that I can make really quick. So, I'm going to add a venom gland. Shot of snake juice. Increases your range damage by 10 for the rest of the day. That's amazing. You've done essentially nothing to the snake extract except put it into a shot glass. That'll do. I mean, that's a, that's so good. So that came from adding the venom gland, was it? Now if I add a spleen. Snake schnapps. Moxie by 5 for the rest of the day. That's amazing. A liver. I already added the spleen. Uh... Combat items. I'll add a liver. Oh, that's the flammable bullet oil that I used that did a shitload of damage. Spleen and a liver. Oh, that's more flammable bullet. Okay. Well, I mean, that's... You know, just being a snake oiler and being able to, like, make all these crazy buff items. Oh, and I can extract some more venom. And some more medicine. Oh, man. This is great. I wonder if I can... I don't think I can use any of that. Oh, I do have a liver still, but that's it. The only thing is I need to kill snakes in order to be able to do that. Okay. Well, I guess I'm kind of in, like, this weird limbo state right now with the game. Because, like... I need to find this, like... I just barely cracked open this second half of the map, right? So I can go to the railroad camp. I could keep exploring this area, but I really want to discover the secrets of all this stuff. And one of the things I need to do is find every single safe in the game that I have missed and go crack it because I have safe cracking now. And another thing I need to do is fucking finally find the silver sphere or the, the crystal sphere so I can complete the ritual. And then another thing I need to do is figure out how to get this fucking circus to do its main event that I have a ticket to. So... There's a lot for me to do. I guess I'll do one final wander before the night's over. Pass an abandoned campsite and an old crate catches your eye. Open it up. And I got a, three lassos. That's amazing. These are like debilitating stuff. Ranch punch. Melee damage by seven. Okay. Well, I guess that was a really good final wander. But in the meantime, I'm just going to stop all back here at my place in dirt water. All right. That's it. That's the end of this one.